Hey, baby rat. <clears throat> hey, guys. I don't know if anyone's here yet, but hello. Hey. Wait a second. Um, we're still trying to figure out the StreamYard thing, so give us just a second. Are comments popping up for you? I'm not seeing them. I'm not seeing anything yet. Okay, yeah, so I think we're gonna have to actually go on YouTube um, for the thing because I'm not seeing comments pop up. Oh wait, no, did, did you see them though? No, I just see private chat. <laughs> did I Okay, break click it? on comments on the top. It's not giving me an option. There's no comments. I think because I'm just a guest, it won't show me anything. Just a humble guest, okay. Well, if you go to YouTube <laughs> and then just mute your tab on YouTube. Okay. Because otherwise you get feedback. Oh God, this honestly, come here Nugget. You wanna say hi? Oh, junkie boy. Nugget says hi to everybody. All right, go away though. Oh, the cats are definitely gonna be in and out of the stream because Pepe is, you know, post-surgery and being a dickhead. Per usual. He's famous. Let me know once you've got your comments worked out, Garen, and then we can. I ready. have I have got my comments up. <laughs> Okay, well, that's good because I'm ready to talk about this. Pepper's doing great, guys. Thank you for asking. He is, I wish I could show you. Um, actually, I can. I'll grab him real quick. He's behind my computer. He's a fashion goddess. He's a fashion icon right now. Obviously. Look at him. Poor baby. He right, usually gets this, like, all crumpled. Oh, baby. I'm honestly always offended by how pretty Chandler looks. It's disgusting. The grease is really doing things today. I don't know what it is. My skin's super dry in real life, but highlight really popped off. So <laughs> I want to hear about the orgy at the end of this book. We're going to get there. Don't you worry. This is going to get raunchy. And I bet like once it's not live anymore, I'm going to get demonetized for it. But that's just like what my live shows do. So <laughs> I'm so ready for this. <laughs> so I guess we can start um with our overall ratings because like you know fun and exciting um what did you give this book Karen? Uh, um initially i gave it a 3.5 i since last night have dropped it down to a three um because okay. i literally gave it a 3.5 because of one sex scene <laughs> but i, I mean that's it. valid i mean <laughs> here's the thing it's like why else read this book yeah truly um i also gave it a three because <laughs> it's weird. Like I went into this book with such high expectations and I think that's maybe why my rating was lower. I think for a lot of the people who read this initially before anyone else did, I could understand why you would rate it higher. Like the shock of there being a smutty book like this. Cause I, I read a lot of smut. Like I was actually just looking at my Goodreads shelf today and I think I have like 180 romances read and then every other shelf for any other genre is like 20 books. So like I read a lot of smut, right? But there's nothing out there like this um, that I've read. I mean, I'm sure there is, but not a lot that's talked about that has, you know, group sex and ritual sex and um, ritual more than sex. ritual sex, more than like three people in a sex scene. So, um, yeah, I, <laughs> I didn't like this as much as I thought I would, despite all of that. Like I enjoyed the sex, of course, who doesn't, but um, yeah, yeah, valid. I, yeah, I gave this a three as well. Um, but I have thoughts that we're gonna get into, so. Literally. Um, okay, so I'm trying to think of what we should talk about next. Feel free to leave questions and, and stuff in the chat and we'll get to them as we talk because we don't have like a, a strict, I don't know, like outline of what we're gonna be talking about. But I guess we can kind of start from the beginning. Um, what did you think when you first started reading? Because I know you have notes on this, Karen. <laughs> um, my notes um, started out very, very hopeful and positive. Very strong prologue. Already in love. I had the opposite feeling. If any of you guys watch my vlog, <laughs> I thought it was so fucking pretentious with the T.S. Eliot quote or poem or whatever the hell that was. I was just like, mm, is this going to be bad? But it was such a strange, I feel like, difference between the 
prologue and then the actual like narration by Poe because I feel like it went from really flowery, like almost Raven Boys style, like nonsensical to something that was not immature, but I feel like some of the word choices that were used were just a little bit immature. strange. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I um, agree. I thought it started out really flowery, but then as the book went on, it just kind of slowly devolved into uh, like I don't, I don't even really know how to ex describe how disappointed I was with the like writing as it went down. And I honestly think that's like the main reason why I was so upset is the writing was just really not that great, um, and the setups for certain scenes to me were so like there was no reason behind it. Like I understand it's kind of hard to justify ritual sex. Like how are you going to make that something that like. Oh yeah, no, that that I would understand why characters would do that. So I kind of understand, but like Poe and her intrusive questions so we could understand char like characters' backstories made no sense to me. Um, it just served to make her a more annoying character than she already was. So that was not my favorite. Yeah, it made her incredibly annoying. Um, who's the, the character that she like went to a pub with? Saint, right? Yeah, I think so. All those really, this like really bad questions that she was asking just just to further the plot, and it was yeah, it was like right when he told her, "Oh yeah, my mom's dead," and she was yes. like, "Oh that sucks. Tell me all about it. Tell me about your trauma." Like, yeah, not the cutest. That one, that happened actually a, f a few times in the book where she would just ask really like stupid off the wall questions just to get information for us. Yeah. Also, the names in this book. I, I, I've been calling her Prosperina the whole time, but her name is like Proserpina, I, except I don't know how you say that. Wait, I thought it was Prosperina. It's like P-R-O-S-E-R-P-I-N-A. Oh, Proser. Oh, that's even worse. I hate I that. know, I, I know. A lot. Ugh, giving librarians everywhere a bad name. Honestly, true. Like... Poe, she reminded me so much of that one bitch in Fifty Shades. What's her name? Anna? Yes. I don't know, but I, I just, oof, she was irritating. I guess we could talk about the characters now, specifically. Who did you, like, if you had to rank the six characters, how, how would you rank them? Okay. Um, oh, that's really hard. I think Rebecca, number one, just because. Oh, okay. I wasn't just expecting that. I, I honestly wasn't expecting that either. I, I thought it was she was a very, very strong character. I don't know, maybe just because she was just like no bullshit all the time. The the character arc at the end kind of bothered me, but I liked, I liked her yeah. the most. Then Delphine, then Beckett, then Saint, Auden, Poe. Okay. Auden is the worst. Thank you. Sorry, we'll Poe's the worst, <laughs> but. Okay. Um, hmm. I didn't like Auden very much, I will agree with that, which I think is funny because he's sort of set up to be the one that you <coughs> like, I think. Yeah. Um, so I think for me, Poe, obviously like dead last, the worst, absolute worst. I think I like Saint the most. I like Angst, I like a good lip ring. He's reminding me of Harden Scott a little bit. And, oh fuck, let me think. Okay, so Saint, I guess, I didn't, I thought Delphine was kind of irritating. Rebecca was okay. That. I guess Beckett was like, all right. Okay. Can we talk about that though? The whole like priest thing? And how there was literally, like if you're going to go there, let there be a payoff. Honestly. I mean, I know there's okay. going to be three more books, but. Were you thinking that too? Because, okay. The way that the book is set up, right? There's six people. Three are in a, going to be in a relationship. The other two are going to be in their own separate la relationship. What the fuck is the priest going to do? Is he just going to watch? Uh, maybe I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I was really, really disappointed with the priest. I, I mean, was ready. He, I was all in. I was ready for that. But I was super interested happened. in him as a character because I, I of all of the characters' introspection, I thought his was like the most intriguing. Even if the payoff wasn't there. <laughs> 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 this comment: You guys need anything? Snacks? A condom? <laughs> <laughs> Truly. Well, that's the thing. It, well, it, what irritated me is he's not set up as the guy who's supposed to be the voyeur. Had he had, like, it would have made more sense for him to be the one who, like, I love watching stuff. Agreed. But, nope, he just has to watch and be like, well, I'd like to fuck, but yeah, alas. The Lord. Yeah. 
<laughs> okay, so smut. I wanna ask you, like, how did you feel about this? In, okay. in terms of like, cause I know you don't read a ton of smut and I think that's the most interesting part of all of this. Like, did this shock you? And have you read anything quite this like raunchy outside of like a group sex setting? Okay, seriously, I, you, <laughs> you you gave me my first smut, which was him by, I don't know who. Oh yes, I remember the buddy read, that was fun. Yeah, that was the first smut. I haven't read that much smut since then, but I've been dabbling. But I had no idea what this book was about. They, I just heard six bi main characters and everyone was like five stars. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna buy it. I didn't even yeah. read a synopsis. I had no idea about the BDSM. So when it started, I was like, uh, yeah, no, I've never read anything like this. It was wild. It was a lot. It was a whole lot. There were there were some scenes that were definitely like really hot, but at the same time, I was still just like shook to my core about a lot of it, things that were going on. Your face seems so concerned. <laughs> Sorry, I'm looking at the chat right now. Do you have trolls? Do you have trolls? There, yeah, there's some people in here. Please ignore them. <laughs> um, oh, someone said the second book is going to be wild. Ooh, okay, here's the thing. I read spoilers. Karen, did you read spoilers for book two? No, I should, though. I planned on just reading a synopsis because I don't really want to put myself through it. <laughs> Feel free. Tell me. I don't care. So I want to get spoiler yet. Like let's let's get back on track and then we can talk about what's gonna okay. happen because here's the thing, here's the tea. I honestly think that I'm going to really like the second book from what people have been saying, to be honest. Oh, okay. So I probably will too. That makes me really interested. Um okay, but getting back to the good stuff this month. Sorry, I was getting distracted by the chat. Um so I was shocked by this book, I think, because, like I said, I'd never read anything with characters like this. Yeah. And I think what surprised me the most was just how casual everybody was. Like, even the most sex-positive people, I don't think, are going to be like, you know what? There's six of us. Like, what if we had a sex ritual in the woods, in the mud? <laughs> yeah. Especially, like, they, they kind of... Could they be that naive to not understand that their parents probably did this? Like, if I heard my parents had some group ritual sex. Like, I'm not sure that I would. Also partake. Yeah, I wouldn't be like, I'm gonna follow in their footsteps. Oh God, the phone conversation that Poe has with her dad. A perfect example of how she should just shut the fuck up and never ask anyone any questions. She keeps, I was like, so her mad reading that. Oh, her inner monologue where she's like. Oh, I think he has a kink fetish. I, that confirms it. And then she asks some more questions about it. I'm like, y'all, like, I am homies with my parents, but I would never ask mm -hmm. shit. Like, no, you just don't. Uh -uh. Why, would you, that, why would you want to put yourself through that? I know. I know. I just can't. I love he's like, I don't want to talk about this. And she's like, but we're going to fucking talk about it, dad. Yeah, Daddy. truly. <laughs> it's 69% of the book. Cheers. Ugh. Yikes. Hello, much, um, I will say, okay, and I think what was irritating too, it's like you get all this build up, the whole book essentially, if you didn't know, is a sex ritual in the woods. Like the, the whole book is a setup. They kind of come back to this place that they haven't been since they were children. So they come back and they're like, you know what? Let's, let's just have a sex ritual. And then we get to the sex ritual and it is very graphic in terms of, I'd say like the language used. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. But the actual acts that were done, not impressed. And the buildup that we get between two uh, characters, no nothing happens. Um, well, earlier in the book, there was a situation. Is it the, the spillage? Is that what you're talking about? The Pillsbury icing situation. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck I that fucked me all the way up like one of the actors ends up going into a room because he, okay Auden can we talk about how Auden is literally Edward Cullen he just is 
he is so angsty. Anytime he gets worked up, he's like, leaving the room. Got to get out of here. Gonna spill my seed. Like he's never had sex before, and so he's just un like uncontrollable. He literally um, masturbates all the time. All the time. Thirty like, times a day. Sees up someone's skirt, masturbates. Does something else, <laughs> masturbates. It seems like, it seems like a lot of work, pal. A lot of work. So he ends up going into an attic and you know taking care of himself, and he just kind of. <laughs> locks eyes with a guy who's walking up the stairs as he's um releasing and instead of doing the normal thing and like i don't know walking back down the stairs and not you know just like sitting there watching um they, they lock eyes and the guy comes over and he's like you know what forbidden snack <laughs> and literally M mind you he doesn't help him. he doesn't help he's just like this has happened okay i will clean it up yes I mean, I think that's probably kind of good for the environment if you think about it. <laughs> Hate you so gross. Oh my god. But um, I would never. Honestly, <laughs> I, they never talk about it because Stephanie Meyer's Mormon. But like, I bet Edward was masturbating a ton. Oh, one hundred percent. A ton. He was literally always hard. <laughs> Are you talking about that TikTok? The TikTok, yeah. There's a TikTok that basically talks about how if Edward Cullen doesn't have a beating heart and he doesn't have pumping blood, like, how does he have sex? So, well, I mean, he's like, he's granite, right? So, like, he just, it's always kind of hard. Yeah. <laughs> so, this is such a mature, mature chat. Half the chapters in this book are not connected. Yes, that is true. That's, I think, the whole thing. The writing's not good. It, the, I said this in my vlog multiple times. It feels like the setup to porn, like in yeah. the writing. It's not even that the sex was just so graphic and like I couldn't handle it. It was the fact that <laughs> you go from like them just planning and planning and planning. And they're like, oh my God, we need lanterns and we need this. And like, what if we did this? And who's going to be the bride? Like, I, And then you get to these like sex scenes that are very graphic in, in the speech, but then there's no actual payoff. And you're like, so I just read about 300 pages. Of nothing. Exactly. <clears throat> and I, to me, the intrigue, I know everybody keeps talking about like, oh, the Thorn Chapel, like uh, there's going to be something there. And I will say, I think the cliffhanger at the end of the book was intriguing, but I don't think overall it was enough to make up for the fact that there really wasn't enough plot. Like just nothing fucking happened. Nothing. Um, can we talk about how like, it was not hard at all for them to decide, yes, we're going to have muddy ritual sex. But they spent, like, a hundred pages being like, who's going to be the bride? Who's going to be the Lord? I, and that's so unrealistic to me. And I shouldn't have been so upset, but, like, I didn't I didn't really care about the pairing. Like, they're not going to end up together. So it's like, why did we do exactly. this? Exactly. Uh, the plot's ridiculous enough. And I, it didn't need to be random for who ends up together. And I think it yeah. ended up, it kind of ended up working because both of them were technically, I say technically, if we're going to use their definition of virgins, like they were virgins and like, I think it was a good way for them to explore their sexuality, whatever, but they're not who we wanted to have sex. And I don't think they needed to use two characters who we really wanted to have sex as, as part of the cliffhanger. Exactly. I didn't think that was fair personally. I agree with that. Spin the um, bottle was good. Oh, we forgot about spin. How can we forget about spin the bottle? That scene was so ridiculous. It was good, but it was. It was okay. Had the setup not been spin the bottle, I probably would have been here for it. Like, I wish they had been like talking about kink or something. And then Rebecca's like, I'm a dom. Like, do you want me to show you how it's done or something yeah. like that? I don't know. It wasn't like, oh, if we're going to kiss, you're going to do it my way in front of all of these people without discussing it first. First, yes. I, I think that was weird to me. And I don't know that much about kink culture, uh, but Same. it just seemed strange to be like, oh, um, if you want to, to get a kiss from me, I'm going to beat the shit out of you in front of, my, in front of everybody. And I, I guess she did agree to it, but. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It just felt weird. It? She did agree to it. And then they were like, well, it has to be okay with everyone in the room. And everyone's like, yeah, really fast. You know, I mean, that's fair. That's a conversation you should have though. You should have like a full conversation about it and like what it's going to be. Not like, do y'all care if I spank her? And they're like, we're drunk, I guess, you know, but then again, that could happen. I guess <laughs> I, um, 
also, I don't know. The only thing I think about the scene really is the fact that Auden just has like an incredibly quick trigger. Yeah. Yeah. And then it happens again later in the book. I mean, like a light breeze. Yeah, literally a light breeze. Like, and it's just like going ape shit. Okay, so I think there's some good comments in here. Um, the okay, someone's complaining that Poe and her reaction to Delphine. Okay, so if you didn't know, Delphine is a character who is sexually assaulted, and the whole reason she's engaged to Auden is because he saved her from the sexual assault and she feels safe around him. And, you know, <coughs> that's valid. It's a, it's a point of the book, but he saved her when she was being raped. Oh my God, soulmates. That's what someone said. Yeah, that's the thing. I don't think Poe's language around most things is appropriate in, the, in any of the situations. And since we're reading the book through her eyes for the most of part, it, it feels weird. It feels strange um, to, to, to be in her head, I guess, uh, because we don't agree with her, right? Like, her romanticization of relationships and her insistence that Auden needs to be with Delphine and her like weird intrusive questions towards Saint. It just, mm, I didn't like it. I think the book as a whole would have been better had it not been told from her point of view. Like if it had just been split because the split points of view, we got alternating chapters. Yeah. It'd be one chapter of Poe and then the next chapter would be like little chunks of every other person's point of view. And I think had it been third person like that the entire time, it would have been much better. I agree. I thought it was way more interesting when we were listening to the other people talk. Yeah. I'm, um, just, I'm over Poe at this point. Is the I people who have read the sequel, is it still from her perspective? or I think we get another point of view. It's either Saint or Auden, I believe. Huh? So that's why I'm intrigued. I guess we can kind of talk about the sequel now. So we're going to not, I'm not going to get specific in spoilers as in, because I don't, I don't know like, who each thing pertains to. I know there's incest as a plot device. Okay. Multiple of the characters are apparently related or okay. might be related. Cassie Claire goes I know. She, she learned a lot from Cassie. So there's incest. I know that there is um, issues with condom use. I think, I don't know if it's, cons if it's consensual non-condom use or not. I think the issue was that like, one person has sex with multiple people without using a condom like in a row even though they're all clean i guess there's like problems around that i think those are the main two complaints and someone also said that i think it was in melanie's review from melton any she said that there is not really any depiction of the female female relationship like we're getting we're getting tons of page after page like male male sex scenes but not a ton of female female so yeah um, none of that is why I think I'm going to enjoy the sequel more than the first book. I think I might enjoy the second book more because a couple of other people whose reviews I really trust said that the next book feels like just more mature in its writing style. There's less, like Poe is a little bit less annoying or we get less of her point of view. We get to see the history be behind Auden and Saint. And for me, I think that's what I'm most interested in in the series. Like I want to be invested in Rebecca's relationship with Delphine. Like, I root for them, like I, I like them as characters, but at the moment, that's not what's most intriguing to me. And I want the male male scenes to be taken care of first. Since that, Absolutely. I mean, that's what we're set up to like want, you know what I mean? Yeah, I really thought we were gonna get some of their backstory in this book and when we didn't, I was really, really bummed about it. So I'm interested to see what that is about. Um, Rebecca and Delphine was so fast to me. And I get it, things happen fast, but I just wanted more development there. That's I also true. hated that Rebecca was like, Auden's my best friend and I'm the only one who was there for him when he was broken. And then she immediately is like, okay, Delphine, let's do this. And I understand, I don't, it's weird too, because like we're in everybody's head. So yeah. we understand that they weren't really right for each other, but from an onlooker's point of view, it's gotta be weird to go from, oh yeah, I see them together. And I also kind of fucking hate her. And then they're not together anymore. And you're like, yeah, let me just like hit that. It's weird. And she does she does point out that she still hates her, but she still maybe wants to have sex with her. And I guess that's fine. Like they didn't say, oh, we're in love now or anything, but it, it yeah. just felt interesting. Yeah. Some of the people in the chat are talking about ages. So all of the characters I think are believe, yeah, the ages of 22 to 26, but in the sequel, there is supposed to be flashbacks to like the teenage characters. And I'm gonna say, I don't know how explicit it is, so I can't really say whether or not it's like problematic or not, but like we have sex scenes in young adult books anyway. 
So like, I don't understand why it's more like, it's super problematic to have the flashbacks in this book, but I mean, I don't know. It depends, like, is there romanticization? Is there abuse? Like, I don't know what happens. I don't want to speak because I haven't read the book yet, but yeah, yeah. That, I, I think that's probably that. the least problematic of what's going to be in that book from what I've read. Yeah. Someone says the author normaliz normalizes non-consensual sex scenes. Yeah, I think it's with the condom use mm. is what I'm betting. That's referring to, but I could be wrong. Okay. Yeah. And now it's, it's frustrating because I am such a hype whore, I guess. Like, <laughs> I really want to see, I mean, everybody hyped this book up and everybody says the next book's horrible. And knowing that I'm so contrary, I'm like, am I going to like the sequel? Is that what's going to happen? Like, I'm kind of scared to read it, but like, I have to, I have to know what happens next. Same. <sighs> have you already bought it? I haven't. And that's the thing. Like, I can't, I'm like, not, I'm kind of upset that I bought this book. <laughs> I don't Same. I don't buy it. I don't really buy books anymore. Like I actually just have my little cart right here. I'll show you guys. Um I just bought some books. I haven't bought books in like ages. Like a couple months really. Um because I have Kindle Unlimited for my smut and then I just use my library and my physical like books. I don't really buy books anymore. So I was like upset that I had to buy this and it wasn't on Kindle Unlimited. Like she still publishes. So like, I guess I sort of respect the hustle for like making me pay $4 or whatever the fuck she made me pay. But yeah. also I would like this to be a one and done and Kindle Unlimited, man. It's mm, so good. Yeah. I need to sign up. Like if you, asked... if you read more than one or two smutty books a month, like you need Kindle Unlimited and there's other stuff obviously, but it's great for smut. I feel like if I get it, it will help me read more smut because like, it's available. Like it's almost free. everything is available. Well, not free, yeah. but you know, it's just there. Um, someone asked what our favorite sex scene was. There weren't that many to choose from. Mm -mm. And it depends on what you count as sex. Like, yeah, because that. mine is the shower with Auden and Saint. <laughs> yeah, that was, there wasn't even sex, but mm -mm. have you guys, okay. No. I'm just way too much up on my TikTok knowledge, but there's like this, kind of like trend where they like it's like two guys walking past each other and one's holding his girlfriend's hands and they like bump into each other the two guys and then one turns around and like chokes the other guy yeah you know what i'm talking about there's like music i don't know i'll, I'll see if i can find one and like post it on twitter or something um for everybody because really good but that's kind of what it reminded me of same peppers being a dickhead back here Oh, well, there he is. Poor little rat. That yeah, TikTok, that TikTok is, is good. There's multiple. There's like multiple. I love the trend. It's it, it's probably a little queer baby, but like we're going to overlook that. There's a lot of that on TikTok. A lot of people use that for clout. Yes. But... Like the thing I sent you yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, oh, I know his little cone. He's doing good though, guys. Like <laughs> he was being so cracked out whenever he was in the carrier and then I let him out and he just started running around the apartment and he's been like that pretty much ever since. So he's fine. He just hates the cone. Um, and he'll do anything to get it like inside out because it's a soft cone. Um, so that way he can like see things, but yeah. Someone. Odd and insane. <laughs> Okay, interesting. Yeah, um, I was actually curious about that book. Strange Grace by Tessa Grattan is supposed to have a polyamorous relationship. So. Okay, okay. Mayhaps we will try it. I really, I don't know if I'm going to like it as much about the smut, but. It's like when this stuff exists already with the smut. And that's, I think, why I was so into young adult for so long is because I think young adult does get the rap or like the bad reputation that like all of the books have smut in it, which is like kind not smut, um, romance. Like all all young adult books have romance, which is like fairly true. And I think that's why I read young adult solely for so long because I liked romance so much. And then I started finding romances that weren't like grocery store mom romances, like aimed at 40 year olds. And I was like, oh, I don't really need to read young adult anymore. I mean, I still do because I enjoy it for other reasons now, but like it's like, if I want romance, like, I'm going to go read a romance. You're not going to like it. I don't mind flowery writing all the time. Like, I like Lainey Taylor a lot. I just, like, it depends. I don't really like uh, Raven Voice. Ah. Which I get to read next month, so. 
Yeah, I'll be vlogging that. So yeah. Why though? Like, what suffer. are you doing? What's going on? Are you okay? Um, I'm doing a little video where I might be reading like some favorites of some booktubers. I don't know. Uh, okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, so it. like, did you highlight any specific lines in the book that oh, were just so, many. so ridiculous? So many. Let's see. I'm going to pull up my thing. I'm going to look concerned, but that's just because I'm looking at my computer. Um, I want to hurt you so much that I dream about it sometimes. Um, like the horny librarian I am. That's fair. As a child, I would bite my own forearm to see the marks it would leave. I wonder if he and Delphine are kinky. I wonder it's so hard that I strain my ears at night to see if I can hear them make love. Oh, wait, I have to see this one. <laughs> hey, I think I may have ended my engagement because I can't stop thinking about you hurting me for fun. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> this fucking book. It's funny because I think had it not been so self-serious, like, I think it would have been pretty good, you know? But it, it, it waffles too much between, like, is this campy versus, like, we're trying to be so serious. But, you know, that's fair because I this, I was scared to read this. I'm going to be honest because I'm, like, writing my own poly book. And I was like, oh, I can understand how difficult it is because you don't know, should I make this serious and, like, angsty or should I just make this like fun and like ridiculous like it's going to be not that all polyamorous polyamorous relationships are ridiculous or anything but um I think it can be kind of hard to write them well yeah yeah so um the scene where like <laughs> <laughs> the scene where Auden like turns around in the wind and he says I hate him because once upon a time I gave him a piece of my heart and then he fed it to the wolves <laughs> so fucking dramatic I I didn't highlight that but I was like <laughs> Also, like when Delph or when Poe is about to perform Cunnilingus for the first time, she says, "Oh no, no, says, <laughs> that word." <laughs> she says, "I've never done this before, but one thing I learned in college is you can't go wrong with enthusiasm." And I was like, "Okay, honey." That's what I'm saying. Like, you can't throw lines in this, like in this book, like this. And I just, and I. Mm -hmm. Oh, that comment! Ernest Hemingway wants what this book has. Uh, Auden does indeed need a Xanax. I will agree with that. Oh, here's one. I think this must be what Beckett feels every time he performs the liturgy of the Eucharist, infuses the holy into the profane, except right now we are the wafers being transfigured. And I know this wasn't the intent, but I was just thinking like, yes, y'all are white as fuck. Y'all are wafers. That is accurate. This was like during the sex scene, I think. <laughs> like the, the muddy... There's a part where um, there's a part during that sex scene where um, Delphine's like holding her stomach because she's self-conscious and Poe says, if only she could see herself as I see her right now and I could hear the opening chords of What Makes You Beautiful by One Direction start playing. Okay, wait, have you seen the edit of that song? It's just you're insecure over and over and yes, over again. Yes, okay, I that's love it. Amazing. <laughs> Okay, well, oh yes, um, they they are actually. I think Rebecca is black and Saint is Mexican. True, but we do like diversity. Yeah. Um, and then I wrote. I just. <laughs> I mean, you're going to be demonetized anyway. But a hot button of my asshole. <laughs> I was like, stop. Okay, Please at least stop. they didn't say pleated because pleated is a word that is used too often. Pleated button. <laughs> <laughs> Are these a pair of my dad's khakis? Oh, the pleats. I was like, is that in the book? No, it's just a bad fashion yeah, reference. I got you. I'm done. Kiss it and make it feel better. I mean, that one is just really out of context, but... What are we kissing? Poe? You know, I, tell the people. <laughs> Poe was like, I wonder if they could see my vagina. And she was like, wonder if they would kiss it and make it feel better. <laughs> I like how it was it Delphine after the scene. She's like, I could see your glossy pussy or something like <laughs> yeah, that. She says that to her. It was wet. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> uh, uh, I need Jesus. We all do. They even had a priest. Oh, Beckett. Pleated pleasure khakis. I'm going to refer to buttholes like that now. <laughs> 
Does the book get extra points for the cover? We love cleavage. I'm more of an ass woman myself, but like that's we like that too. You know, it was graphic design. <laughs> Is my passion. Wait, wait. <laughs> Uh, I like the the one I saw recently that was like graphic design is my burden. I feel that is my burden. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's this designer's burden as well. Clearly, how could you dislike this cover? It's so good. <laughs> okay, but that's another thing I think we could talk about. Um, not super related, but um, book covers for romance. There is this trend of illustrated covers, which I think is like fine, but. If I'm going to get some hardcore pounding, like, I don't really want an illustrated cover. It just kind of betrays the content of the book. Like, fix her up. I'm sorry. That did not that did not need that cover. That's true. It tricks people. They sell that book at Walmart. I wanted to, like, put a post-it and was like, Can you imagine your careful. mama picking that shit up? Like, she would. Glenda, come on. <laughs> the good witch. <laughs> I think the cover is good for the genre. Yeah, I would agree with that too. I think specifically erotica has pretty bad covers. Like erotica has like pearl necklaces or like a high heel or just something like, it's not usually a person. So I like the cleavage that just kind of, okay, do not bring that baby girl too bad's talking into my chat. I do not like, I do not approve. We don't like we that do not. We do not we approve do not. little sister tit. It is not a thing. <laughs> We're not dealing with it. <laughs> Fix her up with such a fucking mess. Okay, and that's another thing. Like, I'm so morally conflicted because I'm like, all my faves loved Fix Her Up. They love this book, and I don't get it. I bought the book for ten dollars, and then I immediately deleted it as soon as I got to the first. Not it wasn't even a sex scene. I I'm listened to it. the whole fucking thing on audio. You are stronger than I. <laughs> I need help. Truly. Don't we all? Don't we all? Oh, wait. There was something that I needed to say, but I don't remember what it was. I think that's it, actually, in terms of mm. quotes that I have. Yeah, I think I said all my quotes, too. I hated that they called Beckett Becky. I don't know why I hated it so much. Well, it's much. confusing. To, why, okay. I hate when fucking authors do this. When they make characters' names too similar or their nicknames, like, we've got a Rebecca and a Beckett. Could you not have thought of something different? Yeah, exactly. Bucket. An erotica with an egg cover would both intrigue and disturb me. Oh, also, you might know this. This might be a thing in romance, but they the word sigh, S-I-G-H, was randomly capitalized. Was that just a mistake or was it on purpose? I was like, is that a, a proper one, sigh? One cannot account for taste. She did self-publish, and it looks like it was edited, but maybe stylistic choices. I don't know. Okay. Okay, so that's not like a normal thing. It's not no, like an a capitalized mm -hmm. size and orgasm. Also, okay. I'm I'm totally realizing my trains of thought are all over the place. So I'm sorry for my crackheadedness in this chat. I totally forgot that we were talking about book covers for a second, but I thought this one was good. Is all I'm saying. Um, I wouldn't necessarily own a physical copy and have tits out on the train, but like, you know, teach their own. Yeah. And I think overall, I, I, I do think that the book should be reflective kind of of the content within um, in so much as I don't think it needed an illustrated cover or something that was like alluding to tameness because it's not tame. But that's yeah. that on that. Um, do you guys have any questions for us? Because we could go on for ages just talking about this mess, but I mean, I'd love to, <laughs> to get to what you guys want to talk about. And then I can talk to you guys about what books that you can vote on for next month because I have some choices. I think that's the, the most powerful part of having my own book club is like, I get to decide this shit. So it's pretty special. I like the Feast of Sparks cover better. There are abs. That's there fair. There are. There are abs. It, I think it feels a little less like cheap, but... Who's your favorite character and your least favorite? Um, I think we ranked them at the beginning, kind of. I would say yeah. my least favorite's Poe, and my favorite's probably Saint, because I like an angsty guy with a toad, not tongue ring, a lip ring. Any rings are fine. Yeah, my favorite was Rebecca, and my least was Poe. Um, I think Rebecca was just the least problematic to me. Like, not even problematic, just I think we didn't get much of her, so she didn't annoy me. That's fair. I think maybe I wanted to be Saint. So... I feel, yeah. I mean. The lip ring. A sandwich, you know, like a. 
<laughs> yes, exactly. The same one. <laughs> Um, do you know a book that has a good poly relationship? I don't know. I'm trying to write one and it's not going great. Um, my, like, I don't know. Anytime I'm having writer's block, I'm like, vampires. We're going to add some. Let's make this vampires. So I really don't know, to be honest, of any good, like, super poly books. I would say the only book that kind of reminds me of this that I think is actually better done is The Siren, which is the original Center series by Tiffany Rice. It is BDSM erotica. So like, if that freaks you out, maybe don't go that route, but it is consensual. It is morally gray in a way because the BDSM really, it's like very consensual, but it, some of the stuff, like I would never want any of that done to me. Um, so I think it's very interesting to read about. And I liked how I actually cared about the relationship that was going on. It was like one chick with three different dudes and they weren't like all together, but seeing her be in love with multiple different people and that being an accepted thing in this book was really interesting and there were other like polyamorous books as well there's a lot of good poly fan fiction with riverdale i'm sure there is honestly and the more you talked about riverdale the more i was like honestly i could see this whole like alice fp situation because we find out that the parents of these kids i say kids they're they're of grown ages but um the parents apparently had a poly thing going on too so Oh yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Established poly relationships work better than developing poly. That makes sense to me. Like it's hard to make a triad very convincing on all sides, I think. That's been my experience. Like two of my characters, I really understand why they want to be together. Two of them as well, but like that third like link doesn't make sense and I'm trying to figure it out. It's hard. It's very hard. Who's who in Riverdale? Yeah, I don't know that I would say that any of the characters like really fit Riverdale, Riverdale character specifically, would you, Karen? No, I mean, not really. I like, I know who I would keep, like, put in the places of them that kind of fit, but, like, they don't really fit. Um, Ar Archie and Jughead would be Auden and Saint. Betty is um, Poe. Veronica yeah. is Delphine. Yeah, but the rest Betty of them don't really not fit at all. Though, so. No, Betty is the only reason why Riverdale is good, and I'm saying That's it right true. now. She has a smutty priest book. Okay, someone's asking me, uh, someone, Heather's asking me if I would read any other books by Sierra Simone. Um, I did read in my comments section on my vlog that the one where there is just about a singular priest, I think it might just be called priest, is good, and that all the other ones are kind of like shitty because most of her protagonists, from what I've read, is that... Oh my God, sorry, I just got distracted by a comment. <laughs> that comment right there, what? God damn it. Um, <laughs> is that Chuck? <laughs> no, that, that's a different Chuck. That's not the one you're thinking of. Okay. Fuck, um, oh, I lost my train of thought. God damn it. Apparently, Sierra Simone's protagonists are always very irritating, like all of her female protagonists. So oh, I don't okay. want to read another book with another Poe, but if Priest is different than that, then maybe. I mean, as soon as, as, soon as Heather said <laughs> that there was a Priest book, I immediately was like, Bad. Yeah, I keep. I think I have that on my TBR. I say my T. Okay, can I ask a question about TBRs for a second? What the fuck is a TBR? Like, I know what it is <clears> technically. <throat> Mine's my Goodreads shelf. Like, if I see something, I click want to read. That's on my TBR. If I don't own it, it doesn't matter. It's my TBR. Honestly, my TBR is just every book that I'm gonna read. Truly. I don't. I don't have it like a formal TBR. I tried that shit once, and then I, was I don't like, do TBR videos. That's no. for sure. My first video was a TBR video, and then I quickly decided. No. Someone's asking about Elite on Netflix. Yes, I do watch Elite on Netflix. Um, you Is it should good? all watch it. Yes. Okay. Okay. It's trashy. Like, it's trashy teen television, but there's a poly relationship. I wouldn't say it's necessarily the same. I think it's almost like gay for pay for one of the characters, but like the sex scenes are hot. So we'll see what happens. Well, I'm a dumpster, so more trash is better. <laughs> Well, the second season is coming out soon. I think it comes out in September. The first season, definitely watch it. Don't watch it dubbed, though, because it's in Spanish. Just watch it with subtitles. That's my recommendation. Super good. Would recommend. Okay. Heather, I love appropriating Catholicism. Um, someone oh, Heather. Me, honestly, oof, not good. Also, the way that he was talking about his religion, um, what's his name, Beckett, not at all how I think of my religion. I'm Catholic, so. I did not know that. I mean, 
I'm vaguely, vaguely Catholic. My whole family is. I'm just not very religious myself. Same. Um, hardcore Degrassi in Spain. Sold. I will watch the show now. Honestly, I wouldn't Degrassi, but sure. Yes, we can go with that. Someone asked me about a book called Enthralled, which sounds super familiar, but like I don't know the author. So please let me know what you're talking about. I have watched Euphoria. I really enjoyed Euphoria. It's I triggering, it. but I liked it a lot. I have not seen it. I need to. Can you give a vague summary of your possible writing? Um, I don't write much. I think um, a lot when I'm uh, in the car and then I come home and don't actually end up writing, but like I, I know exactly what it will be when I do write it. Um, two dudes, one girl, the guys were like best friends. One of the guys fucks the other over, enemies to lover situation. And then they meet this girl that they both want. And one of the guys is a vampire. Probably. We'll see. I don't know. That's pretty much it. I've read some of it and it's really good. So well, thank you. there's a whole chapter. A whole chapter is written. <clears throat> hey, that was a good chapter. I was like, I would like more, please. Thank you. John the Darling, I believe. Okay, I actually have Enthralled downloaded. That is, yes, I have that downloaded. Um I I like John the Darling. I read a that was the like motorcycle club romance I read last month that was a major age gap, sort of like gross, but like I was here for it. Um, I don't think Enthralled is like supposedly as naughty, so I haven't like been as intrigued to pick it up. But I don't know why that comment scandalized me so much. I just saw Nun Smut and I was like, I was like <gasps> <laughs> No, but I did see a wholesome video of nuns like rocking out to Britney Spears' is Toxic, which was fucking excellent on twitter a beautiful mm -hmm. twitter beautiful you know video. twitter is a dumpster fire as evidenced by today on book twitter but but <laughs> there's good stuff too there there is good stuff but like you said earlier the people who are the worst are the loudest and so you tend to forget about the good stuff but there's a lot of good stuff there's a lot of good stuff mel talked about enthralled I'm intrigued. Sometimes me and her agree like hardcore on Smut and sometimes we don't. So I'm down. I'm down to read that one. I'll probably read it sometime. I don't know. I have my whole, I say I don't do TBRs. I have my entire month of reading planned. It's actually right here um, for September and August. So I really don't have time to like add other stuff, which kind of sucks. I usually just pick up Smut here and there when I'm bored, but I don't know when I'm going to fit in enthralled. Hopefully soon. My life's a mess. I, Ooh. I guess we could talk about the, what I'm putting on the poll today. I'll put it up probably tonight and keep it open for maybe a week or so. And you guys can help me decide what we can read next month. The live show is gonna be actually the last Monday of the month instead of the second to last, mostly just because of the way, it, you would only have two, two weeks to read the book and I didn't want that for you guys. But okay, so the first one, that I'm putting on the on the poll is War by Laura, Laura or Lauren Felissa. She wrote Pestilence, which is like plague daddy smut. This one is about war, you know, one of the horsemen of the apocalypse or whatever. Um, it's excessively long, but I'm very excited about it. Also, that comment that I just got, I'll address that in like five seconds. Just give me a second. <laughs> Um, number two is Broken Night by LJ Shen, which is the one I'm most excited about. So like, if you want to like make me happy, I don't know, vote for that one. It's New Adult. It is the second book in a series, but they're kind of standalones. Um, it's a spinoff of LJ's Sinners of Saint series. And basically it's sort of like a friends to lovers situation. Very excited about it. Very, very excited. I'll, I mean, I'm definitely going to read at least Broken Night, if, even if it doesn't like get chosen. And then the last one's going to be Killing Sarai by J.R. Redmersky, J.D. I don't, I don't, I don't know what the other initial is. I can't write, but um, that one's like kind of mafia murder shit. I think. Ooh. So. That sounds fun. Also, yes, Vaughn is the best character, and I'm very excited for his book. But <clears throat> that's not what we're getting this time. I hated the first one. I also hated the first one, and I think that's why I'm so sec excited about the second one. I think that. LJ Shen does a really good job at writing characters with history and that's what's going to be in, in that book. So I'm really excited about that one. Also, I have heard from Riley Marie that Killing Sarai is really good. She recommends that one a ton, so I'm excited. So we have a little bit of a little bit of everything. We've got kind of like a fantastical book, like a new adult, and then like a mafia type murdery book. So 
you have options, I'll put them in the poll. The only one that's like not super new is Killing Sarai. The other two I think came out within like the last month or two. So they're gonna be fun. Okay, and then someone asked, I don't wanna announce anything, but someone said, is the Black Dagger Brotherhood Book Club also happening? I started reading it because of you. Uh, top to your trash, it is. So there might be a podcast happening in the works, perhaps. It'll be happening at some point. We're still working out the details, but yes. Like the Black Dagger Brotherhood series is what got me into romance, if you guys didn't know. So I'm like so hyped to like analyze it and pull it apart and like wreck my childhood a little bit. I don't even, I think I might've started reading those in like eighth grade. So yeah, if you didn't know, it's like vampire smut, so. And there are like a billion of them. Like there, I think the series and the spinoff, there's like 21 books. So there's plenty to read and talk about. And I honestly, like I have been reading other paranormal series since that one, and it still is my favorite, like hands down my favorite. The characters and the way that J.R. Ward writes her like happily ever after, is, mm, I think that's what really fucks me up about a lot of these books. And that's probably why I rate a lot of smut low. It's like, mm, there's no proposal. You're not gonna take care of her forever. I'm out. <laughs> Am I garbage? Like, that's what I want out of my life. I just like, work's just not for me. I feel that. Uh, you know? I yeah. that. And I never I never wanted to be that person, but you start working and you're like, I could understand. I could I think it. we're all those people. You know, um, we're all just looking for sugar daddy. There are some people who are really fucked up who are like, I love to work, and I'm like, That's awesome. And we need those people, but that will not be me. So Yeah, no, I mean not Happy me. ending or bust. True. Talk I'm excited to read your books though. I'm really excited. I do. Oh, it's gonna be so good. And I'm just so excited to hear from someone who like hasn't read the series before. Yeah, especially since I'm so new to smut, like... I think you'll be fine. These are, like, definitely smutty. It's definitely explosive, but it's not like this. <laughs> the only thing, in my opinion, that's cringe about the books is the, like, use of 2000s references. The smut is not cringy. I like I it. I can't wait. I'm ready. I mean, you know, like, my whole aesthetic is Buffy the Vampire Slayer, so I'll fit in. I'll fit oh, in with yes. the bad references. Yes. Someone I'm asked Garrett, yeah, are you really asking that? Can you not tell? The emotion just, like... Hey, Come I haven't through. cried. I haven't <laughs> cried <once. laughs> Maybe next time. Yeah, maybe next time. Um, okay, let me let Did me this see. Book make me cry. I pretty much cry with every book I read at least once. This no, but I not make me cry. I gasped and I made faces. I know because in the other room, like Hayden, the way our apartment set up, he was in the kitchen and I'm laying in bed and he can see me and he's like, "Are you okay?" Like I was making faces as I was reading this book, which normally doesn't happen. So I guess. Okay, so the, the reveal at the end did make me very sad, but I did not cry. Ew, no. I didn't really care that much. I was sad. I that was just, like, low-key hoping she'd show up and be like, now you're all my subs. But alas. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I forgot about the fact that the mom's, like, a dom. Yeah. I was here for that. I needed it. I would not mm. want to know if my mom was, yeah, no. That's a no for me. I just, I hated that we we found out that all of their parents were, like, fucking too. Like, I was like, no. Could they not have just had, like, a baking club? Like, it did not need to be that deep. But also, like, where's the magic? Like, it felt vaguely magical the whole time, but then there was no magic. I think they're going to try to excuse some of the weird bullshit away after the second book with magic, is, is my guess. Okay. We'll see. Ice Planet Barbarians. Okay. I don't know how I feel about Alien Smut. I'm not sure if I'm ready to go there yet, which <laughs> you would think that I wouldn't have any hangups at this point in my life, but I don't know. I just don't know if that's going to do it for me. I did read a few chapters I was telling Garen of some Bigfoot Smut, and that was enough. That was enough for me. I think I am good on supernatural weirdness. Vampires, werewolves is about as much I can do. Are you the person that I bought, like I joke bought the yeah. T-Rex smut for? I did. I barely knew you. Got uh, that sent to my Kindle. That was literally like a week after we met. And I was like, hey, I'm going to buy you this vamp this T-Rex smut. Werewolf smut. Yes, there's were there. Okay, shifters and vampires are like the most common paranormal smut. Yeah, yeah. And that was what I really started out with because I wanted twilight but like more banging you know so that's kind of where i started out and to this day that's still my favorite i would say genre uh, is paranormal specifically like traditional or traditional like adjacent vampires and werewolves yeah i say traditional because i'm reading the guilt hunter series right now by nalini singh which like it's fun 
But I, the whole idea of angels making vampires is very odd to me. Like, it's just not as cool as, like, traditional vampires. So, yeah. Second book is more magical. Oh, my God. Brenna. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron, get your fucking girlfriend. She's in another room. I can't stop her. <laughs> Polyamorous relationship. Ooh. Surviving Amber. Spirit. I'm fairly okay with most trigger warnings. Like I can. Me too. There, there isn't them. really anything that I can't separate myself from when I read it. I yeah. know a lot of people have trouble with that, but I'm so used to it. Like I think because I'm a fat person, I'm just so used to like being able to like just take anything I read. Honestly, that's fair. Wolf Song by T.J. Clune. Yes. Okay. So fucking good. So underrated. So funny and wholesome, and uh, the third book's coming out soon. Gary, you would, you would like that one, so. Mm. What is it? Wolf Song, Brenna bought it on Audible a couple of weeks ago, so I'm going to listen to it soon. I don't know if the audiobook's any good. It always, like, worries me when people pick up audiobooks of books I enjoy that I didn't read on audio, because I'm like, what if the audio sucks? What if they end up hating it because they listen to it on audio? But I would recommend Wolf Song, like, so highly. It's a fave. Like the, the one person who I like successfully convinced to read this book wants to get a tattoo of it. So like, no big deal. It's casual. Yeah, I'm gonna read it soon. Hi, Amy. Hi, Amy. Yeah, I'm gonna read it soon. The Luck series, but make it funny. Mm, I think okay. I saw a video of, did Soul do a video of it? Of Wolf Song? Yeah. Yeah, he's the one I was talking about. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. I haven't listened. Okay, is the Twilight audiobook bad? Because I need to know. Yes. Oh my god, it is <laughs> horrible. Can I, okay? I want to do my own like narration. I'm not saying my voice is great, but like I could do it. You should. You should do it in like an accent. Service for the people. In Arizona say. accent. You're like right beside Arizona, right? I can't oh, believe you say something like that to me. <laughs> New Mexico. I'm I don't like, know geography. I'm closer I'm to like crazy. Louisiana. I'm closer to Mexico. So. Honestly, Chan would be good. I feel like Chan would be good. He's so can narrate. Honestly, the best discovery that I think I've made since making YouTube was like people being nice to me about my voice on my podcast. Like, oh, thanks. Or people telling me I talk too fast. Like, also, thank you. It's my goal. Mine too. You can't understand what I'm saying, and that's probably a problem. But like, mm -hmm. I oh, and you know what's fucked up, guys? Everybody says that I talk too fast, but whenever I rewatch my videos after uploading them onto YouTube, I watch them two times speed. Like, I have to. Like, Wait, that's to. a thing you can do? What? Yeah, of course. I'm really new to YouTube. I, I listen What's to YouTube? everybody's videos on two times speed. Even my How own. do you understand me, though? Like, how do you understand me? Hayden like, always like, asks me that. I listen to my audios on three times because I'm crazy. But I love two times speed. I love three times speed, any speed, fast. I listened to the Twilight audiobook on three times speed out of necessity because it was that bad. That's the only book I've ever listened to on three times. That's fair. I mean, you you know what the book is about at that point. Yeah, yeah. I didn't I didn't need to sit through it. However, the life and death is narrated by Michael Crouch, who is my favorite audiobook narrator. So that one was really good. Hmm. But then, have you listened to Life and Death, or have you read it? Because the names are mm -hmm. ridiculous. I haven't. Edward is Edith. <sighs> I don't know if I could do it to myself. Somewhat. Okay, romance audiobooks can be good. I was very on the fence about them because I was like, I don't want to listen to someone say throbbing member like while I'm in public, but some of them are good. Some of them make me blush in, in public, but it's fine. I feel so stupid. Okay, I didn't know for a long time you could speed things up on YouTube, but now that I've discovered it, I can't live any other way. Especially like if you're already listening to your audiobooks on like three times speed, you need to speed up your YouTube watching. Yeah, no, I didn't know that until right now, so... Yeah, I watch a lot of people's booktube videos. I just never comment, so don't worry. I, I watch everybody's stuff. Yeah, I don't think I want to hear a thick, rigid organ said in an audiobook, so oh, I'll probably awesome. just keep reading. Ew, can you imagine listening to an <laughs> audio of Lesson of Thorns, like the icing scene? Mm. I'm making it sound so delicious, but it was not. It was not. I mean, Saint enjoyed it, but it was also copious. Like, it was a copious amount. Like, it was too much. The way it was described, like down the hands and the shaft, like shaft. Like oh. what was the use of words? It was like in the crevices of his. Okay, I should have yeah. done that. I take it back. I take it back. <laughs> like his webbed fingers. 
I bet <laughs> it's that TikTok. It. It's the TikTok of the guys like, "Can I take your order?" And the kid's like, "I want some milk." Like that's the that's us reading the book. Oh. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, someone said. The yes, I know. I feel super guilty because I know that like a lot of my viewers, English is not their first language, and I feel bad because not only do I talk too fast, I also am terrible at enunciating my words and don't worry every time I go home my mom bitches at me she's like what did you say can you repeat that so that's fair <clears throat> I need to, it's something I need to work on Ooh, but I am always going to jump cut my videos so. honestly yeah, so. same literally same um does that army hammer read the audiobook I kind of yes. like want to do that now though. Yes. That's the whole reason I was like intrigued to read or listen before I watched the movie for Call Me By Your Name. Oh damn it. I just remembered his feet. Never mind. I can't I can't listen to the audio look now. If you didn't <laughs> if you didn't know, Army Hammer let his kid suck his toes. <laughs> and then posted a video. <laughs> I know. I think what did you post? Foot fetish Friday or something? Uh, hashtag foot fetish Friday. No, it was no. something worse. It was something worse than that. Mm. I'm so mad. <laughs> okay, I'm glad you learned. You learned because of Chan. That's sweet. A lot of stupid words for smut, all the innuendos I have to use. <sighs> That's a thing. I keep getting, I say keep getting. I've gotten demonetized recently on a couple of videos for my cursing, and like, I don't want to have to stop, but. I know. As soon as I hit those hours, I'm just going to have to be like, Disney Garen, if I want to make any money. I might just start bleeping them. Like, I don't think I can control my speech enough to stop. Oh, can you imagine bleeping my videos? The effort. Oh, my God. Whoever said Kat should narrate Timmy's lines. Fuck. I hope you guys know that I constantly harass her about that. Like, if I ever see anything with Timothy, I'll just send her pictures so that was me hooping just then i was hooping <laughs> she's really fucking good at hooping so good i'm so ready for her video on it there's Teach gonna me be a hoop. video yeah she's gonna do like she has a, a story right now you should ask her questions on her instagram and she's like asking people for like i don't know oh there she is hi cat oh my god <laughs> Are you just, like, just like secretly watching us i love that but yes, go ask cat questions because I don't have any intelligent questions to ask about hooping, but like I want to know about it. So please ask her questions. I honestly can't stand it because that you look like Timmy because I really wish I had curly hair like his and yours is just like there. It's like good. Yeah. It's like perfect curly hair. Yeah. Get out of this chat. Someone please. asked me, oh my God, for my for my vlog, someone was like, why do you straighten your hair and then curl it? You know, not all of us were blessed with any sort of good hair. Like, my hair is not curled or straight. It's ugly, and I have to fix it every day, okay? Be blessed with your curls and your straightness. Straight hair, not your straightness, because that's not a blessing. I was like, whoa. <laughs> Sorry to be heterophobic in the chat, but. <laughs> Cat. <laughs> Cat. I just imagined, like, opening a, a package and finding that. I would make a wig. You did not just call your hair ugly. I have good long hair. I have hair. That's true. You do have hair. That's all you can ask for, you know? Just blessings. Oh, do you have highlight on right now? Me? A little bit, but also for some good. reason, the lighting's just making my face look greasy. Also, it might be my sunscreen popping through. Like, at the end of the day, my sunscreen's like, hi, nice to meet you. I wear no, sunscreen. No, it, it looks day. like highlight. It looks good. It does not look greasy. The glow. I wish you guys could see Nugget right now. Oh. It's on my desk. I'm gonna wake him up for you. He's the king. <laughs> Never apologize for heterophobia. <laughs> we need more of it. Okay, hey bud. No, come here. Drop your hair routine. It's in her latest video. He smells like poop. His face. He's a pancake king. He loves you, that's cute. He really does, like he is my bestie. Pepe's great and all, but like, He's my OG. Yeah. I want your cats in, in this, but it's fine. Come here. They're not going to come to that. Garen, what are you drinking? Titi. Um, I'm drinking water now. I was drinking a lime LaCroix with vodka. Titi, come here. The internets want to see you. Do you hear her? 
Come here. Oh, I hear. I don't know where Pepper is. Hey, baby. I'll be right back. That's shocking. Oh, please, please bring the cat. Ooh, Nugget's got his big leg up. Does anyone have Nugget questions? Obviously, I, this chat is just kind of devolving. I'm sorry. Every time you say Pepe, my brain hears PP. I do call him PP Sylvia because he PPs a lot. He PP'd in his carrier when I brought him back from his neuter surgery, so that's fair. Who does Hayden get along with best? Okay, here's the tea. Hayden loves Nugget and Nugget loves Hayden, but the thing is, Pepper and Hayden have the same energy. Like, the same energy. And I think that's why Hayden, like, low-key hates Pepper so much, because Pepper's so manic, like Hayden. But, oh, yes, you did come at the best time. Okay, I'm, I'm bringing you back, sorry. Someone just getting there, too. This. It's a so kitty. Drop this and send it to me, because this is the cutest thing. I'm here to do some business with a big iron on my hip. Honestly and truly. How much does she weigh? I shouldn't ask how much a lady weighs, but. Too much. Go on. Okay. I don't know how much she weighs, honestly. The vet, uh, the vet was telling me Nugget's getting too chunky. Uh, yeah, we, she's, we've had her on diet food forever, and somehow she just keeps getting bigger. But I love her more this way. I think she's nicer. This is Nugget's lick spot. If you rub his chest, he starts licking. Okay, ow. Um, what did Nugget think of the book? Wasn't a huge fan. Do I, okay, so Pepe has a lot of nicknames and his name is not from Pepe the Frog. It's Pepe Sylvia from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. If you haven't seen, go check it out. Also, if you just like YouTube Pepe Sylvia, it'll show you the clip. It won't really make that much sense if you haven't actually seen the show, but um, how did you come up with their names? Nugget had a different name. I can't remember what it was when I thought he was a girl. And then even before I thought he was a boy, He's just so fucking stupid and he's just a big dumb nugget and I just called him that all the time and now he's nugget. Pepe, um, I had to convince Hayden to get a second cat for like six years. That's how long I've had nugget without having a second cat. <laughs> and the only way I could convince him is by naming the cat Pepe Sylvia, which was like a joke. Like, oh, I'll, I'll just, I'll name him something fun. And then he told me that I would have to name the cat Pepe Sylvia if I got another cat. So, yeah. So that's Pepe, but we call him Pepper or Pee Pee or Poo Poo, depending on like what he's done lately to like fuck our house up. Pepperoni. Pepperoni. Pepperoncini, Pepper like those peppers. Oh yeah, pepperoncini. Yeah, I only have two cats, sadly. The lady I got my cat from just posted a picture of a black rag doll and I want another one so bad. But we have a dog, so I can't have more than three pets yeah, right we now. Have we have four, three cats and a dog. It's too much. So no, it's no, it's so not. I would do it, but I don't live in a house yet. Like once I own my own house, I'm a hundred percent getting another cat. It's happening. You have boys. We have girls. Well, oh Rory yeah, that's the thing. Cat. The female energy from cats is a lot, and the dudes are just chill. They're so sweet. Yeah, we have three girls, and their cat, girl cats are just really mean, and so it's like living in a battlefield at all times girls are so bitchy do i recommend rag dolls a hundred percent and i would have adopted a second cat instead of like getting another rag doll but the temperaments of rag dolls versus other cats are so different and then also the size like i would be i feel bad to get like a regular kitten <laughs> because it would be so small in comparison to nugget like i don't think people understand the sheer size of rag dolls in comparison to regular cats like we brought a tabby around one of our rag dolls and it was just so scared even though like the rag dolls don't mess with like none of my boys have ever been like antagonistic towards other cats but they're just like it's just probably not a good idea to have rag dolls around other cats i say that some people are probably going to come in and be like i have a rag doll and another cat and that's like cool but i just i don't know they're just so chill and they like follow you around the house and stuff which i love oh there's pepper He's in the sheets. Let me grab him. Okay, now that she's gone, let's talk about, I don't know, anything. What is Chandler not like? She's back. Never mind. Of course he has completely messed up his cone. He always tries to go under the um, sheets to do this. 
He looks like. Um, no, he's so stupid. <laughs> he looks like a, a queen in like the mid 1600s. That's, that's why they, they call these Elizabethan collars, e collars. There you go. Oh, yeah. see, I didn't know that. I thought it was like an e boy thing. Oh, I'm oh my God, Darren. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. These things are so noisy, though. I hate them. Dude, Pepper's zonked. Like, he's just not moving. He would normally squirm out of my hands. Thank you for saying I'm your fave. Subscribe to my channel. Dude, Garen's the best. That's the reason I had him on here. Oh, obviously. Look, I haven't cried. Don't make me cry. That's the last thing. Well, I feel like that would just be very fitting. Yeah. I love the collar. The collar is super cute. Pepe is an e-boy. Thank you. Hateful. Oh. Oh, y'all, the worst part is his right? hand. Look at his fucking hand. He's like missing fur. Looks like he's wearing a bracelet. Can I hate hit, it. Can you hit that e boy? <laughs> let's, let's see. Can you do it, Pepper? Oh, oh, oh. He said, fuck you. <laughs> okay, bye. And now gets back. I have like my laptop on a tray, like a latch ray or whatever and nuggets right under it i wish you guys could see him he's very cute i'm so i'm gonna send you my setup because it's a fucking disaster is it please do it is <laughs> the worst yes okay garen is so good at vlogging he is a king oh thank you so much i really feel the opposite but thank you that makes me feel better <laughs> meanwhile me and kat are like let's see who can post the shortest vlog because garbage Y'all's vlogs are so good. I love y'all. Hers were actually good, though. Like, her her short ones, I was not good at those. Oh, I love this question. This is so not relevant at all, but I will answer it. UT Austin's amazing. Would recommend it. Huge fan. My sister is going there. Um, it's an amazing school. And if you live in Texas or around Texas and can get scholarship money, go. Because, like, academically, it's great. It's a cool. Okay, fuck you, Kat. Love you. Um... Yeah, go to UT. If you have more questions, you can DM me on Twitter if you have a Twitter account because I will answer all of them. Big fan of my college. Um, I, don't, I don't know that we have more to talk about really, but here we are. Texas State. Texas State is also a school. That's all I got to say on that. In Texas? Huh? There are schools in Texas? I know. Like, we have to ride our ponies to school, but we do have a couple of universities in this fine state, so. I wasn't prepared for the fucking accent. Like, no, was, it wasn't even oh, a good one, to be honest. It was, no, it was good. I, I, I have a really good East Texas one I could whip out, but, like. Whip it out. Do I it. Would, I wouldn't be able to come out of it. I need you to do it. It's not unsolicited. We're ready for it. <sighs> I got to prep myself. No, I, mm, I need to listen to some of my cousins speak, and then I could do it. Where did you go to grad school? I also went to grad school at the University of Texas. Texas State is, in cl is a clown college, yes. That's why I didn't want to say anything. Advice for art school dropouts. Natasha, you're doing great, sweetie. That's all, all you need. Um, oh, wait. Oh, I can click on things. Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. But also, YouTube. Advice. I'm in debt, but good times. Maybe, you know what the issue is? You know why I haven't posted the first episode of my like book thing on the internet is because Hayden refuses to do a British accent. He said he would work on it and he, he can't do it. Um, I just need to change one of them to a yeehaw accent. I can do it real good. He can too. We do good yeehaw accents. So. Oh my God, he needs to do the British accent. I, I think he'd be good at it. He's actually really good at accents. He just, he he's self-conscious. I tell you to go harass him on social media, but he doesn't have any. That's true. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Elizabeth. Yeah, if I like accidentally click on a comment, it shows up on the screen. StreamYard is fun. I kind of like it though. Okay, compared to like the regular YouTube Hangout bullshit, I like that both of our faces are up the whole time. Yeah, I, I think it's actually working really well. I've been nervous about my internet all day. Like my internet is trash and it's all right. Like, well, that's what you get when you're on the fix. Yeah. I mean, it was it was either be super depressed in the city or be low key depressed in the the woods. So someone said yeehaw smut. I have some actually right here. <sighs> yeehaw smut. We're ready. Wait, is there really yeehaw smut? Give me some cowboys. 
Oh, Dylan with two ends. Come on, Dylan. Welcome to your new favorite holiday. Okay, wait. I tried to read some. I actually got approved for an arc. I didn't realize like what the. I think it was called Cold Heart Warm Cowboy or something, like on Edelweiss. And uh, I don't know how to say that word. It might be Edelweiss. I, I'm not sure. But um, it was a second chance romance because he had amnesia from bull riding. So I DNF'd the fuck out of that. I also had amnesia from bull riding. Like at a bar or like? Wow. Yes. I could see you on one of those like animatronic bulls. Literally one time and I hurt my back and I said, no ma'am. Did I buy it. this at the grocery store? My sister bought this for me. It was for like one of the first videos on my channel. It was like, my sister buys my books. Some of them were like pretty funny like this. And then some of them were like kind of useful. I don't know. It was very cute. Um, I'm actually keeping this though because I am doing a video at some point. It's like an I read five like grocery store mom romances because it's funny. My mom always bitches at me for reading like young adult and romance even though my mom only reads romance. Like that's all she reads. So I'm like, you want me to be intelligent, but yet. Leave Patty anyway, alone. I, I should leave Patty alone. But anyway, um, yeah, like I never really got to read any of those kinds of romances. I always stayed away from them because I was like, oh, that's what my mom reads. Like, I don't want to read that. Like Harlequin. She reads like only Greek billionaire romances too. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> very specific. Um, she got her yeah. East Texas, like Yeehaw Boy instead. but. Um, You've got to cultivate your kink, you know? Honestly, true. So I, I told myself I'm going to read like Nora Roberts and some like typical grocery store mom romances. So that's going to be fun. I don't, I, that'll probably be like October or something because I have two other I read fives for um, September. One of them is going to be it's like so fun. Like I'm so excited for this. But <laughs> this is is just, so I'm planning. Clicks so or you're going to like do Gossip Girl too? Perhaps, perhaps, yes. You're right, you're right. I, I'm doing I'm doing like five mean girl books, like throwback books. Um, I'm so excited. It's, it's gonna be so easy because these are so short and also these cultivated me being a bully in middle school. So I'm excited. <laughs> you, Honestly, like some of the comebacks and stuff. Okay, you know how there's like an, do you remember the it list in these? It's like what's in, what's out. I had one of those. And I would put like people's names on it. Like I wanted to be bad so good. Like it's funny too, oh. middle school is such a weird experience. Like I yeah. got bullied, but I also bullied. So mm -hmm. yes, very excited to revisit these. I have the other four books that I'm reading for this coming in. And guys, the thumbnail that I'm imagining, uh, mm -hmm. perfection, chef's kiss, if you will. Like I'm hyped. Oh, so we both kind of had the same experience because Gossip Girl definitely helped me rise above like <laughs> being a scared nerd and also why I like really like gold everything now. Yes. Okay. Also, so I need to find pictures, but I reinvented myself in eighth grade. Like seventh grade is when I lost my friends. <laughs> so fun. Um, and then in eighth grade, I was like, no, seriously, someone says Blair Walter from Texas. I changed my wardrobe. I dressed like Blair. I had the plaid skirts. I had the headbands. I had everything. I had the tights, the flats, fucking everything, guys. I did like, too. I need to find pictures because I made my mom, like, I told my mom how I wanted to dress, and she got so hyped that she, like, bought an entire wardrobe for me for, like, the school year. And I, I owned that shit. Like, I need to see, and I'm going to recreate that shit for the thumbnail, too, because I'm, like, so, I'm so hyped for this video. It's going to be so fun. I love when you do that in your thumbnails. When you did your e-girl thumbnail, I cried for days. Sometimes you just have a vision, you know, you gotta really carry it out. <laughs> your your Photoshop blonde hair that you did for I, really after. School. I also deserve to be bullied, to be honest. And then but like I also was a bully. It's like life's a highway. Mm. My sister was trying to FaceTime me. She can wait. Burn book. Oh, I wish I had a burn book. Oh, did you ever read the book? Oh, yeah. That might be featured in this video that I'm gonna make. So don't worry. That might have been what sparked the entire idea. Yeah, I want to read Gossip Girl. I literally have all of those books, and I've never gotten rid of them. I'm like, one day I will revisit. One of our cats is named Georgina because of Georgina from Gossip Girl. Oh yeah, no, I'll I'll find the pictures and I'll put them on. Um, sorry, is there loud a crash. Please don't. No, it's it's Hayden being really clumsy. I'm sure, or like Dingo doing something stupid. But yes, I'm so excited, guys. Okay, yeah, I like kind of briefly flashed this at you guys, but like this is the kind of like 
crazy shit that I just, I don't know. There's, there's so much random shit in here. I started like writing things down in a physical notebook and it has like changed my life a little bit. And I just have all kinds of ideas now for like videos that are coming soon. So I'm so excited. I love that your friend in middle school had a burn book and got sent to the office. I had a gossip girl, MySpace. Oh my God. I did too. I did too. Honestly, we are soulmates. Like, Ugh. we're too similar honestly but now like i'm not i'm so far from that person i can't even imagine doing like guru gossip i can't stand it makes me so sad and now we're like surrounded by gossip girls on twitter to be honest it makes me laugh like i kind of like guru gossip i'm not gonna lie i think it's funny I, but I, I just have really thick skin i was like straight up bullied in middle school so for me like now i just think that shit's funny yeah. um i mean i don't think you should like come for people's necks and like what's the word um like dox them or anything but like some of the stuff that's on guru gossip is funny so yeah no, i think so I think opinion. <laughs> not unfounded i think some of it is just people who hate specific people and want to talk shit about them yeah no not cool. there's not a cool. lot of like there is a lot of like funny things on there too. i agree yeah i made myself a tea bully romance oh shit we yeah. just had a therapy moment. That is why you love bully romance. Who was the bully? Who was the bully? What was their name? Um, was their name? There were multiple bullies. Like, they were all girls. Like, oh, oh, oh. What was the one, though, that's like your bully romance? I don't, like, I, I, the sad thing is I think I've blocked so much of that out. Like, I can't think of, like, one person that just really fucked me up. But I, the issue was, like, I, okay, so I didn't have, like, one best friend in seventh grade. There were two girls who were best friends for life. And they used me as like a pawn, like it, for like a couple of months, I would be friends with one girl and yeah. then the other girl would like take me back. I was on the cheer team with one of the girls. It was, it was a mess. It was a whole mess. Now one of them dropped out of high school and works at a McDonald's. And then the other one, she's like living her best life. She's doing all right. I mean, like not as great as like us, but like, she's, she's doing things. <laughs> I laughed I would, immediately. Oh my God. Okay. Wait, I didn't want to be a boy, but I also bullied boys. I bullied boys and I was bullied by girls. That is accurate. Mm. Now I got to rewatch Gossip Girl. I just started rewatching Gossip Girl, to be honest. Bully they're romances are fucking reboot. fun. Huh. They're doing a reboot on HBO. HBO, so that, you say? God, I, I love HBO. Like, I, oof. True Blood, so good. Wait, how have we never talked about True Blood? Maybe we need a True Blood podcast. Like, the fucking 20-year-olds 20, 20 having too many podcasts is so accurate. It's so true. It I, I, One of the pages in here is filled with podcast ideas because people just obviously want to hear me talk for, like, an hour about bullshit. 100%. Dude, we should do something with True Blood, though. Like, read and talk and watch. Oh, so much. I literally read it in, like, not lit. I did read it. I actually did read it in middle school, and then I watched it with my best friend. We would, like, get together on Sundays to watch. I remember, like, I get, like, my Facebook memories, and I'll get it from, like, whenever the show was out, like, 2008 or something. Watching True Blood with Tina. I literally, like, always forget the age difference. You're like, I watched it in middle school, and I was like, I was a freshman in college, <laughs> like, when it came out. For True Blood? Yeah. No, that's not true. It came out in 2010, right? Were you a Maybe freshman? Maybe not. No. no, no, no. It came no. out. It came out when Twilight was happening. So it was like 2008 or 2009. So I was like a junior in high school. I was in middle school. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I thought, thank you for I hitting feel. me with math and logic. A group of white men is called the podcast. That is true. That is true. They're powerful and dangerous. I feel like honestly, I was made for podcasting. Like maybe YouTube's not my thing. Maybe I should be podcasting instead. Maybe. We got to talk more about True Blood, though, because that shit is my fave. Oh, slaps. I didn't read all of the books, like, all the ones that came out, like, later on. But there was I read, like, six set. of them. Yeah, I read, like, the first six that was in that box set. Amy, you read all of them, but one, baby, you got to you gotta finish that. Like, you got to do it. You do it. At that point. Oh, it's so good. And when she, okay, like, gets together with Eric. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would do anything. Live podcast. I think... I think if we do, which we probably will do, a Black Tiger Brotherhood podcast, it's going to be live. So you guys can harass us. And yeah. also there's like less editing on my part. That's why the Dumb Bitch Book Club has sort of like fallen to the wayside a little bit. Like it's going to come back, I assure you, if you were like actually someone who watched that. But it's just such a bitch to edit because Hayden says I'm in like every five seconds. And I know I do too, but like he's bad. So it's not great to edit. And yes, <laughs> it'll be back. It'll be back. I'm just, I want to get through New Moon. It's so boring. 
And I also want to move on to other books because can you imagine Her Hayden reading like a Sarah J. Mouse book? Can you imagine? I'm so ready. He, yeah, Mist and Fury. Like, oh my God, oh. can we? He's oh. going to be here for the gossip. Like, oh. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm so ready. Could you imagine Hayden reading this book? I wanted him to, I explained some of it to him, but I think I might make him read it. I was actually thinking about that on my commute home today. And I was also thinking like, I should probably put my hairy legs down. <laughs> Pardon me. She wears jeans to work, people. Um, no, I was thinking I might actually yeah, make him real sun thorns because kinky. We read um, the Swamp Angel book together. What the fuck was that book called? Back River Quiver. Oh we no! Back we read River it to him. Quiver. He, That's we a good band name. That can it be our new band name. So fun! It was so fun reading that with him. Mm -mm. Hayden's a Leo, which doesn't make any sense. Kind of, actually, he likes being the center of attention a little too much. I was about to say he's very loud. That's because he's actually a little deaf. But yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, it's fine. He's, he's a drummer, so he has some hearing loss. Oh yeah, I forgot he's in a band. Yes, he is. He had a show on his birthday, and it apparently went well. That's good. Chapter four of New Moon is the best paragraph of all time, pure art. I don't have it in front of me and I don't want to get up and get it, but I trust you and I'll look at that later. Is that the depression? Like the seasons changing? Honestly, probably. Mm. Okay, shout out to you for still having your peak young books. Like that's, ugh, I'm still not over the fact that my mom got rid of my copies of Twilight. Like that was brutal. <sighs> She made me she made me go through all my childhood books and she said set the ones aside that you want to keep and I did and she got rid of those too and I was just like okay my mom threw away all my Harry Potter books when I was at school all my original Harry Potter books because she thought that they were making me into a high school bully because of witchcraft why are why are they like this although if like you know my mom that's like the most my mom thing she could ever do yes Hayden is in a band I thought you knew that Julia he was in band in high school too. He's such a band geek. Like, no, he was a marching band. Yeah, he was a marching band in high school. And now he's in like an actual band. He thinks he's very cool. He is like kind of cool, I guess. Wait, what's everyone freaking out about? Did I do something? Oh, the all your books being gone. Oh, yeah. Not gonna I, lie, I laughed. I mean, fair. I told a girl to fuck off because she called me the F word. And I was like, fuck off in a text message. And she showed our preacher. And so my mom threw the Oh, she bringing it to church. She did at church. It was really, honestly, one of the most traumatic moments of my life. But it's fine. <laughs> I'm good. He was on drumline. He played quads. Not as cool as like snare, but like it's cool. It's cool. I was such a band groupie. I was a, I was on the cheer team. I shouldn't have been, but I think my dog threw up on my Twilight box set. <laughs> oh no! That is honestly like. Sad. Okay, if you were to read Twilight for the first time now, would you like it as much? Since I had to read it for my podcast, I think that the answer is yes, because I don't remember. <laughs> oh my god oh sorry these comments are killing me um i didn't remember much from twilight and i especially don't remember very much about new moon and i'm scared to read eclipse because i forgot there were two makeout scenes and now i can't remember which one was my favorite but yeah i i i still love it it i was thinking about this i'm actually going to do a video on it coming up soon about like my like how i got into romance reading and like why i love it so much but like on the arrow spectrum, I'm like as far from that as you can get. Like I am a whore for romance, like in books, in my real life, etc. So like having that in Twilight and like seeing that like unconditional, like I would die for you sort of love. Ugh. Like I think even if I had read it for the first time today, I still would love it just as much. So yeah. These comments. I wish you I I would have high school bullied you probably. Trying to summon the wind. 
Uh, been there, done that. Good pastime. What? What now? This person said they got accused of witchcraft because they would stand on tree stumps and try to summon the wind. <laughs> I mean, I straight up think I'm clairvoyant, so. Me too. Oh, we have so much to talk about. Hey, I don't bully anyone right now. I don't need that on no. me. We're, t- we're too old and it's exhausting. It's so much, it would be so much work. I think really it's like my laziness. It's yeah. kind of astounding to me that I make YouTube videos and that like I care about it so much because I'm the laziest person I know. Me too. It's wild how passionate I've become like so quickly because. I'm so apathetic about everything else, but this <laughs> for some reason. And trying to get people to understand, like people at work are like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm planning a video, leave me alone. Yeah. I'm learning tarot. I love it so much. It's the validation. You know what? You didn't have to say it, but it's true. Uh, you said <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Honestly, sometimes. That's why do we do everything, right? Yeah, everybody does everything for validation. But also, like, it's really satisfying to upload a video. I don't know why. No, I all of the stuff that goes into it. And and I think for me, it's my most, like, crazed ideas that make me the happiest. Like, things that I think of on a whim. Like, my, like, this shit. Like, I'm so excited for this. I thought of it so randomly when I was talking to Kat about, like, the private series and how they, like, made that book literally witchcraft at the end. What? They, like, completely fucked that series up. Yeah. Um so oh pepper why is my attention so bad but yeah um like my ideas that just come to me randomly and then i make a video and i upload it and i'm like yes this worked out it's so satisfying it's like the best make videos if you're thinking about it yeah lemon the, the the preacher told my mom that i talked about harry potter like at church and so that was where i was becoming a bully like it was corrupting me um, she she got rid of them, but then she also bought me a like a brand new set like a week later. It was very short lived, but I will never forget it. So she's a very different person now. She, she had me very young, so she's very different now. But aren't we all a little different? Los Cucos. It's a Mexican restaurant. It's my favorite. I love it so much. It's a chain. Some locations are better than others, but the queso, ugh. That's the one thing I don't like about Austin. We have such great tacos here, but we do not have good Tex-Mex. Like, the Mexican population in Austin is just not great enough to sustain the amount of Tex-Mex goodness we need. So, Houston's where it's at. Houston's awesome. Like, Austin's beautiful, but Houston has, like, the diversity and the culture. 10 out of 10. Whataburger, yes. AGB, also yes. Religious parents are wild, yes. That's also true. Yeah. Neither of mine are religious, thank God. My my parents aren't anymore. Um, they were when they were young. Um, around here, the pressure to be religious is great. Um, yeah. But as I got older and started learning more, I started educating them more. So we're all very chill. Good. I like this comment. And I was actually going to ask you, Garen. So... How many how many months have you been on booktube now? I I started it the weekend that y'all were in BookCon. So whatever literally whatever day you came back was the day I posted my first video. Damn, that's like the beginning of June. Hmm? Yeah. Damn. It feels like you've been around forever, but also like you just started. So someone said something about like consistency and imposter syndrome and editing skills and stuff. So like how has your time on BookTube been? I've been like wanting to ask you and I think it would be interesting for people like this. Like, have you had a good time? Is it what you expected it would be? I have had a good time. I think that most of my issues with it have just come from myself not being consistent enough because I'm I have so many things going on in my life with theater. Well, you have so much going on. I don't. So this is everything for me I do have a lot of stuff and i know that like if i set myself on a schedule of filming on the days that i'm not doing theater at night and everything then i could do it but it's also like making myself do it um when i have a good idea like when i know something's gonna be fun i have no problem doing it but imposter syndrome is real oh my uh, god it's so real <laughs> It is so real, but I've been I've been very lucky that people have enjoyed what I've posted so far. Like anytime I get down about like numbers or anything like that, I think about like I, the numbers are not why I do it. I like and I like hate when I let myself get sucked into that like thought process. Um, and there are people who've been doing this for three years that haven't like hit two hundred, so I can't really yeah. 
numbers ever. That's like um, what I have to remind myself of too. I feel that. And I think for me, like some people weren't happy about my like video on consistency, but um, I was really happy to be able to share that because that has like seriously changed like my game, like being able to map out what I'm going to do for the month because when I know what I'm going to post, I get excited to make the video. You know, if I know that like I'm supposed to be posting on Sunday and I have no ideas, it just stresses me out. And I'm like, well, like, why am I doing this? Like, no one cares. But if I have everything planned out, like everything's good. And I don't feel that imposter syndrome quite as much because I'm so excited about my own stuff that I can't worry about other people and what they're doing and like feel down about my stuff. It's like my number one tip to people like plan your content. Yeah. If you're tip about planning and like writing out a script and stuff to like, so you can look at it as you go. So you don't get lost in the ums and everything was really helpful to me and helped me get a lot better. I a lot oh my God, yeah. And I'm actually, so my first like book bong or whatever on my channel, which like did fairly well. I think that was like the first video. It's funny because I was talking about imposter syndrome and like not feeling like enough. That was the first video that like, in my opinion at the time really did well on my channel. Um, I'm actually going to do like a reaction to that and see if my feelings are still the same and if I still feel the same. Um, Cause it's, it's coming up on the anniversary of that. And I would like to revisit that and just, you know, get zesty. I love reaction videos, like reacting to your old videos. Those are so fun to me. So, yeah. Yeah, I can't wait to see that. That'll be great. Be very zesty, hopefully. Cause I know, oh God, I tried to rewatch that recently in some of my takes. I was really in that hot take, like early booktube mode. I feel like that's such a trap that people fall into. And I totally did the whole like. But like the thing is you gotta be able to pull yourself out of it. And you did fairly quickly. And a lot of people are still there. And it's yeah. like the brand now. The, pe the people that are like, you know, big booktubers. I do it differently. Like, and you fucking don't. It's the reason why they're doing so well and you're not. It's because they're good. Yeah. <laughs> They've got good stuff and you just, yeah. Mm. I could talk about that all day, but I'll, I'll save that for my video, but yeah. Mm. Okay, I'm glad that helped. I love hearing when people say that my advice helps. That that makes me happy. Imposter syndrome is worse because the platform is so saturated and it's hard to stand out. I think that's true in a way, but also not. Like everybody bring like everyone's completely different. I know that sounds like really basic, but it's so true. And if you are literally doing everything you love and not looking at anyone else, people will come. Like I the things that I have like jumped outside of my comfort zone to do have been the ones that do well on my channel. It's cause like, I'm excited about the videos, you know, whenever I think, okay, well, what would other people like? Or like, what's everybody else doing? Like what tags are popular? The, the, the videos don't do well. Even if it, like, even if it's filmed great and the thumbnail is amazing, like they just don't do well on my channel. And, yeah. Um, is this your friend Natasha in the comments? Is that who that yeah. is? My reading Big is booktubers odd. don't exist. That's so true. It is a frame of mind. Yes. I'm like, that's my favorite song. I'm booty popping to that right now. It's a frame of mind because it I mean, like subscriber counts different. Sure. Like the amount of like fame, I guess, could be different and privileges. You do get more if you have more subscribers. Sure. But it's all about mentality. And I told mm -hmm. myself after like being in drama a couple times because I had that like just that gossipy and like I need to jump on the train of like commenting on everything um mentality that I was like not going to do that anymore I was going to remove myself and be more chill and have you know that removed mindset that some of the people with more subscribers have and I'm so much happier for it and I think more people can have that relaxed attitude and mm -hmm. it'd be better yeah I, agree I, <laughs> I planned a cross-country move in two weeks like a dumbass that's funny. Moves suck. Moving into this apartment sucked. Props to you. I hope if you've already moved that it was smooth. And if you're about to move, then I hope it's easy for you. I never, ever want to do it again. I'm so glad we bought this house and we're like going to be here for like 27 years unless something happens. I never want to move again. Like, oh God, being an adult's weird, but like I dream about owning a house. Like amazing. Never having to leave. Uh, it's wonderful. It is and wonderful. no one no one can tell you how many pets you can have. Exactly. So ready for that. One day. Steel wigs, drag them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Still not really my style anymore, sadly. I try not to say like tea in videos anymore because I'm just like so over that mindset. I'm trying to think the about only tea I'm is bad books. Like that's it. That's all yeah. Yeah. I, the only tea I'm spilling is bad books and then randomly when I'm just like, Chandler, who? <laughs> Chandler Ainsley's favorite book is After. That's the tea I spill. Ooh. 
Moving's the worst. I have to buy so much random shit. Yes, boxes. And I think it's not even the random shit you have to buy. It's the random shit that you just accumulate. And you're like, I have to throw this in a box. And I know that when I get to my next place, I'm going to have nowhere to put this. Like, what is this stuff? Yeah. Not yeah. Possible. That's my biggest thing is that I convince myself I don't need to throw away anything or that like I convince myself I need all of these random things. And you just fucking don't. Do I need this elliptical? No. The treadmill is fine. But now I have an elliptical and a treadmill. <laughs> when you become an adult, you become too powerful. This is a dongle. Sorry. Honestly, okay, everybody bitches about being an adult. It's not that bad. It's kind of fun. It so. is. It's, it's fun, but it's also dangerous because I can do whatever I want. Which is why I have an elliptical. Oh, okay, Chuck. That's fine. Or Alex. Sorry, there's two Chucks in here. Oh my god, yes. I got rid of so much stuff when I moved this last time. It was amazing. And now my closet has like no clothes in it. And I love it. It's amazing. People are sending me memes and I gotta stop. This is not the time. Is it to also, the book chat? This book literally keeps looking me in the face. And I'm reading this this week. So has anyone read this? Can you let me know? I want to read it. I don't know why I want to read it. I heard there's a sexy house coat robe situation. So we're ready. Mm -mm -mm. I don't know why I do this to myself. This video is going to be a mess. And I have to read all of these books. The worst part is like I can plan my content as much as I want. And then it comes to reading the books and I'm like, okay. Now I have to do that. I'm not excited about it. Yeah, yeah. I have five books that I have to read that I don't want to read. I DNF the mister if that counts. It does count. Thank you. I constantly um, request arcs that I just don't read. Mood. I've, I am trying to, like, not worry about it so much. Um, but it does stress me out a little bit. Mm. So, and I have so many good ones, too. I got approved for that Aaron Morgenstern one. Is that her last name? The Starless Sea? I have that one. Okay, I'm jealous. Um, I have this little baby, which I got signed. I'm so excited about this one. I don't like I don't feel like I have to like I'm not obligated to read this like right away, but I yeah. want to read it. Right away. I have it on my little TBR cart. I started it. I have opinions. I've been waiting on you to start oh, it. I'm so ready to talk about it. I love vampires so much. But also I just have a feeling it's not gonna be like fun or sexy enough for me. What kind of upcoming video is it for? If the mister I don't want to spoil all my content, but I'm reading some low rated books. So like the concept's great. And I know people will probably be excited about it, but also I have to read low rated books. And I'd, that's not fun. Especially when I could be reading a feast of sparks. You know what I mean? Oh my God. Such a mood. <laughs> Getting excited for new books that are not the book that I'm currently reading. Yeah, that's like my, and the worst, I was realizing too, do you guys do this or is it just me? You'll start reading a book, you'll have it on your like currently reading on Goodreads, and then you'll stop it to pick something else up, and then you never pick that book up again, and it just languishes on your currently reading, and then eventually you just go back and like want to read everything, so it's not on your currently reading anymore. I did that. Literally every month. <laughs> I'm like, I wish I could shelve, like I should probably start shelving these. Because they're not really DNFs. It like wasn't a conscious choice. Like I'm going to DNF this book, and I kind of want to like go back and revisit those. I was thinking about doing that maybe for a video. I don't know. Because like, are they bad? I don't know. I never finish them. All the time. Yeah, I I know that someone else has to do that. I'm reading eleven books right now. That's a fair amount of books to read. So I see nothing wrong with that. Have we read? I read four or five of the Fallen, King Fallen Kingdoms book. I think I have two left to read. I like them a lot. The audiobooks are fucking great. I like that the number of people watching goes to 69 pretty frequently. Thought I would point that out. Nice. I didn't know that. I have an on hold shelf. I like that. Oh, you know what? Wow. Okay. I love seeing what people are doing with their books. How do you deal with reading slumps? I don't get in them. I like if a book I don't want to read, I just stop reading it and read something else. Or I DNF. Like I consciously make the effort to DNF. Um, I say reading slumps. I mean, there's times when I want to read more or less than others, but I don't ever really consider anything a reading slump. There's usually 
not more than a period of a couple hours or a day when I'm not reading something currently. Uh, I wish I could do that. <laughs> My readings, like the, after the reading rush, it took me like a week to start reading something again because I was just done. I was like, no, never again. I, I I'm, I'm done with reading. Look to see. Well, I didn't read that much during the reading rush. So <laughs> I had one book that like completed all the challenges. So I didn't get very slumpy. And I think for me, I read so many different genres. And I think a lot of people are like, well, like this fantasy doesn't sound good. And I'm reading a fantasy right now. Like if a fantasy doesn't sound good, I can go to smut. And it's usually like the more weird, compelling page turning smut I can find is what's going to get me out of a slump usually. Yeah. But like, I, I just don't really get that slumpy. I, yeah, this is what I do. I make myself do it. <laughs> I don't know. That doesn't mean that I like all the books I read. And I think some people focus on that a lot. Like, am I really enjoying this? Like, I'm feeling kind of slumpy. Sometimes I don't like what I'm reading, even if it's a good book, but I just power through. I just don't care. Am I in a slump or am I depressed? Wow, I felt that. <laughs> yeah, that hit me. I think that's valid. My faves go closer to my bed, I guess. That's funny. Oh, my bed's my bed table is bad. There are literally like twenty five books on that motherfucker. I straight up sold my big bedside tables and got two. They're like literally this big each, so I can't put books on it. Like I just don't have books in my bedroom. Also, I have this room now to like read in, so um, there's books everywhere. Yeah, I'm slowly making my office like a reading room. I looked at. I think you tweeted about the Billy. Is it Billy bookshelves by IKEA? Yeah, they're great. Yeah. Right? I have these skinny ones because I only have hardback books and the middle of the bookshelf on the long ones will buckle if you only put hardbacks on it. So yeah. good to know. Yeah. I mean, I say that they're, they're pretty well put together, but I just didn't want to chance it. And I like my skinny ones because I feel like you have more options on how you can arrange them. So my headboard is an actual bookshelf. I love that, but I would be scared, you know, because I would also be scared. Like, what if a book, like, you know, falls and hits you? Like, what if a lot of books fall and hit you? Like, if there's an earthquake and oh you die. Oh my gosh, have you seen that episode of Boy Meets World where the girl literally dies in the Halloween episode? The no. books fall on her. Okay, well. <laughs> I need to I look it up. About, please comment because <laughs> I think it's like, God, what's that kid's name? Sean's, Sean's girlfriend, I think, dies. No way. Like the like was it's it like Halloween, like she doesn't die die. I mean it's the Halloween episode. It's like funny. Oh the Halloween well, episode. It's scary, but yeah. Okay, I know it's it's the I know what you did last uh, summer episode, right? It has I Jennifer Love Hewitt in it. Perhaps, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Maybe it's really yeah. dies. I don't know. The one where Eric adopts the basketball. Oh my god. I need to go back and rewatch Girl Meet or Boy Meets World. Girl Meets World slaps though. You guys watch that? Have you watched it? They shouldn't have canceled yeah. it. I watched that when I was moving actually a couple of years ago so there is drama there they should not have canceled it i think the leads got too powerful and too woke and disney was like cut it out and they were like no so they canceled it that's true what shelves are good for hardcovers um i have i mean any shelves are i think the the billy bookcases are worth the price they're a little more expensive than the ones you can get at target and walmart that look similar they're like the they're better constructed but i would say if you're gonna put all hardcovers on on your shelves um, the skinnier Billy because there's like a wide one and then there's skinnier ones and they're the same like prices so like I have two skinny ones that equate to like one of the like fat ones um, and obviously the middle shelf is smaller on the on the smaller bookshelves and so they're less likely to buckle in the inside in the middle you know what I mean from the weight so that's what I was reading and I was just like I don't want my shit to fall apart it's expensive it's not really that expensive I think they're like $50 each or something like that 60 maybe. So that's my lesson on bookshelves. You're welcome. What are you watching now? I don't really watch things that much anymore. If I do watch something, it's an episode of Queer Eye or Will and Grace or Beverly Hills 90210. That's, that's pretty much it. That's accurate. Um, I really, it's weird how I went from like watching so much TV. Like I was up on everything. If you would have asked me like, Hey, do you watch this? If it was a current show, I would have watched it now. Not so like I literally don't watch TV. <laughs> and if I do, it's throwback stuff. It's weird. I think watching stuff gives me re like my, it's bad for my anxiety. Like I can't sit still. 
reading is different for some reason, but um, I cannot, I can't sit still anymore unless it's something I've already watched and like know what's going to happen. Like yeah. um, I was watching Make It or Break It recently, or like I watch a lot of Vampire Diaries or I did watch some of Game, Game of Thrones. I didn't watch like the last two or three seasons. Um, yeah, I did watch yeah. Game of Thrones. I, did, I watch a lot of throwback stuff because I can just kind of turn it on both versions of 902 and 0. All three actually. It's soothing. And so, someone was like posted a study or something why people like friends so much. It's because it's such a familiar show to people and it like does soothe your anxiety if yeah. you have anxiety. So I understand that. But for me, it's like yeah. Vampire Diaries and like. <laughs> I don't know what my obsession with paranormal is, but oh my God, One Tree Hill. One Fuck, Tree yeah. Hill. <laughs> it's weird. That one wasn't a throwback for me. I started watching that in college. Um, I, so I didn't one. watch that beforehand, but it, for me, it's such a uh, comforting thing. Gilmore Girls as well. That's the reason I almost failed math in third grade. Because of Gilmore Girls? I would watch the episodes when I got home instead of doing my math homework. And I didn't worth learn it. my multiplication tables because of Gilmore Girls. So honestly, worth it. That show is amazing. true. <laughs> they had like a pop up a pop up exhibit when like the show got revived, and I got to take a picture next to like the Luke cutout. That's cool. I might post it on Twitter. I have it on my phone. You should post it. You should. I love. Oh my that god, show. Chad Michael Murray is such a douchebag, and I feel like he's kind of a dick in real life, but I love him. He is on Riverdale, and honestly, I ain't mad at it. I ain't mad about it. I might really need to get back into Riverdale. He and plays a cult daddy. I love a cult daddy. I watched the first season as it was coming out with my best friend slash college roommate, our senior year of college. And it was like the highlight of our lives. We loved it so much. But I love camp. I, love I kind camp of let so it much. I kind of let it fall off and I need to get back into it. Someone asked me about medium and then said something about criminal minds or something. I don't watch like those kinds of shows. Like I don't really like um crime shows um those shows like procedural crime shows are the scariest things in the world to me like that, me too guess, i'm such a baby i don't like thrillers or horror either oh i said that I anything like that age, but I, I i can i can love paranormal horror i love like slasher things because usually the people the kids in slasher films that are getting killed are not me um but anything that's realistic or too realistic i can't do like criminal minds is so scary to me can't do it I've watched a couple episodes. It's fine, but like I don't not not when it's dark. Yeah, um, no, I obviously, can't do it. Team Logan. Okay, we love a rich man. Even when I was in third grade, I was like, yeah, I can get it. I honestly, like blonde too. I have such I have such a soft spot for blonde guys. Oh man, this might be where I cry. <laughs> Jess, I mean Jess for me. I, love I mean, that's that's sure. Like you're basic, but like that's fine. I, I am basic, but I, but for me, I love the symmetry of it. I love how the story. I hate that. Story, I think that's what I hate is the symmetry. Really, of it. I, yeah. I love that the story ends exactly the way it begins. I think I thought that was beautiful. But I'm also basic. I mean, I get it. Like he's the bad boy, and like upon rewatch of the show, like the first time I watched it all the way through, I was very Logan, and then I watched it again, and I was like, I understand why people like Jess, but. I really, really like Logan, like for myself. Maybe I not like for Logan Rory, too. But I like Logan. I think honestly, from a smut standpoint, like the 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 Rory Jess sex is going to be very vanilla, very boring. But the Rory Logan sex, they are satisfying. He's the mature choice. Like, I I would steal a yacht with him. Dean can die in a hole. Dean is <laughs> the worst. <laughs> he really is. Mm -mm. you feel the christopher and logan i don't like it i like logan and christopher sucks also the christopher shit that they worst. worry is sapiosexual yeah okay fair i don't know if i believe in sapiosexual what is that like being attracted to smart people like aren't oh. we all to an extent like if you've got okay. that's something that fucks me up about smut like if i stop reading a book usually if it's smut immediately it's going to be when the guy's too stupid i just can't do it Oh yeah! Wow, I'm not attracted to any any stupid people. I don't think. <laughs> and you don't have to be like book smart, book smart. But one of the guys was like in a gang in one of the books I read and was just so stupid. I was not here for it. There are so many words that I just don't know. A himbo, like a bimbo, a male bimbo. Ah. Oh. 
Jock card? No, I've never read that. I think Fair I America, tried. To, like you read it. I think I tried to read it and didn't like it. Let me check. I think it's by Sarah Nay. I read something by one? her. No, Has I didn't. Anyone read this? Um, I can't see you. No, I think I've seen that. Isn't that like kind of paranormal or something? Yeah, I think it's like about gay witches. I'm. I like that. Okay. Also, no, I didn't. I read how to how to date a douchebag, and then I think I tried to read something else by her that I did not like. So I was just like kind of eh, on Sarah and I. But everybody says Jock Row or Jock Hart is good. So maybe I'll try that. If y'all want to give me some more recommendations, that's cool. How to date a douchebag? Well, if it's really bad, I'm not going to read it. <laughs> that's not true. I read a lot of bad books, but I don't want that to be my like thing. You know, I think that's an, a thing that people can get stuck into is like making too many negative videos or like only reading shitty books. Like I, I would hate my channel after a while and I would hate the books that I'm reading. Like I, I it needs to be balanced for me personally. Good to know. Perfectly tailored smut book plot. I'm trying to write it. I don't know. Vampires, Polly. I am going to read after we collided when the movie is closer. Yes. Favorite Pen Penelope Douglas book, Punk 57. So good. It's one of my favorite books of all time. Would recommend. It's like problematic as fuck, but whatever. Also, yes. Garen, did you know that the after sequel is going to be rated R? I did. And I know that Dylan Sprouse is in it. <laughs> we love Dylan Sprouse. We love the Sprouse brothers in this house. It's going to be wild. I still need to watch the first one. It's not that bad. The acting. Know. Okay, the fact that Hero won a Teen Choice Award for his acting is just mind-boggling. The teens. The teens. I DNF that book. The My teens. Plant Mom's Back. Hi, Natasha. I need to I need to try These Witches Don't Burn Again. I was like really sad when I tried to read that, so I did not enjoy it. I need to try it again. Cole. Uh, Cole. I don't know. I like Dylan's little like mole thing on his. His, his little mole thing. So you've seen those pictures. Oh, talking about his pecker pick. Texas. What was I gonna say? Cole's great, I guess. But Dylan, I think, is where it's at for me. I like that movie where he um, murders people. The, the teacher, the student yeah, one or whatever? that one was pretty good. He's pretty I good did, actor. I mean, I'm just not surprised you watched that. That's so funny. I watched it with Hayden, too. That's, like, probably the last scary movie I watched, and that wasn't even that scary. That's, I, well, Ooh. no taste. No Have taste. you watched It Follows? No. It's about a, shit. a, it's a, about a sexually transmitted demon, which sounds ridiculous, but it's would, actually so it, good. Have you watched Teeth? Yes. I have not. I also haven't watched Human Centipede, but the, ugh, I can't stand. <laughs> I can't stand torture porn. I can't. Don't like it. I get why really, people I'm do like it. it. No, it's fine. I get why people like it. But teeth, seeing a penis fall out of a vagina was a lot for me. I think it would be cathartic, and I might need to see that happen. It. She's a hero. You know, she's people a hero. Dylan and Barbara are so cute. They kind of look related, but they are cute. Would would agree. I like Barbara. She seems really sweet and wholesome. Who's Barbara? Um, Dylan Sprouse's girlfriend. She's a model, Victoria's Secret model. Oh, Palvin? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I got you. And that's valid, Pisces Paperbacks. Brenna loves those movies, but that, for me, ugh, I just can't. Like, I don't like body, I don't, body horror. I don't like body horror. That's my thing. And that's why I don't think I can read Wilder Girls. I was having to decide which of Lala's favorite books from like this year I was going to read, and I was like, I'm not fucking doing that to myself. Yeah, I just can't do it anymore. I like, I like, like, paranormal, atmospheric horror, like, The Witch, um, It Follows, That's My Shit. Slow Burns. <laughs> Slow Burns. Uh, I like ghost stories. That's, fa that's fair. God, I wish I could. Oh, I, okay. Have you seen, I'm sure you have, you Harry Potter bitch, um, The Cursed Child or whatever. So like the stage version, the people that did that 
also did Let the Right One In, which is like a vampire book, I think, that they turned into like a stage production. Fucking incredible. I saw that a couple of years ago. It was like all Scottish actors, like the Scottish, I don't fucking know, but so Dude, good. I didn't know that it was a stage play. I had no they, idea. They, they did, did make that. it into a movie too. I think it was a movie first, but the stage, oh yeah. my god, it was amazing. I don't you know there was Did you like see it in person or did you see it online? Yeah, oh, no, I saw it. In, it came to, I don't know how. I think I got an, a, an email from a university and they were like, hey, like they're traveling here. Like, do you want to see this? And it was like 20 bucks. Best money I've ever spent. Like, so good. That's Vampire. So cool. yeah. It was like about a young vampire girl who like kills people. So I, I like the book a lot. Anything like that, I'm down for. But like true, like body horror, like no, it's really spooky shit. I don't really like when kids are involved for the most part. Yeah, yeah. This person said horror books are so different than horror movies for me. They can read anything but can't watch anything. See, for me, it's opposite i can watch a lot of stuff and be cool but when i read things i guess because i'm processing like more thoroughly and slower it scares me like stephen king's oh, um mm -hmm. salem's lot salem's lot is his vampire book and i love vampires but that book scares the fuck out of me and i don't even know why i don't get it but it does a lot which paranormal creature do you need good smut from that doesn't have it chupacabra actually i don't know Vampires are the only there, ones really There is chupacabra porn. There I'm is sure chupacabra porn. There's everything. What is it? There's nothing new under the sun. It's like one of my well, not favorite quotes, but I think about it a lot. Um, yeah, literally anything you can think of is on the internet. Mm. Anything. I love vampires. Ugh. I would, who wants to die, you know? <laughs> not to get too deep in the, in the group, but... Natasha... I'm dead. I just imagined a Mothman smut, and I'm mad. I'm so mad. I'm scared of Mothman. Have, I have not read Verity. I don't know if I will. Uh, the last Colleen Hoover I read was It Ends With Us, I think. I think that's where I'm going to leave my Colleen Hoover reading. Her books aren't that terrible to me. Like, they're not great, but she's too into, like, the shock and awe, and I'm just, like, not really into that sort of thing. That's the thing. I don't think I would read Aliens Fun. I'll probably will at some point, but like, ooh. I think the um what was it? Their fingers though. I don't want to be probed. It's not a fantasy of mine. We talked about this in one of our groups though, that there's like um tools you can get that oh, are like <laughs> dragons and aliens and the internet is a strange and beautiful place. Oh. So mad. I'm still buying those for everybody though for Christmas. Do I, I'm not. that friend. Can you imagine? I mean, I, li I don't live with my parents or anything, but I'm sending it there. My nightmare. I'm going to DM Spencer. People that, people that buy sex toys and live with their parents are so brave. Just like th imagine the conversations. I don't know. Alex, I've already bought yours. It's on its way. We need more sexy monsters like Bigfoot. No, there is. There's Come for Big Bigfoot is a book that I read half of. Volumes one through five. Come Don't recommend. Me. Do not read it. Consent oh, it is a stuffer, Danny. It's a stuffer. That's for sure. My stocking, <laughs> my stocking is stuffed. <laughs> I, you know, I never thought I'd say this, but there were consent issues in Come for Bigfoot. So. <sighs> I hate you and so it wasn't much. The girl. It wasn't the girl. It was Bigfoot. He did not consent. So. I hate you. I hate you for this. Don't read it. <laughs> I wasn't prepared. I, I mean, I wasn't going to, but I'm definitely not going to now. Wig. Space weed. Getting space stick or space weed. I'm trying to think. Like, what paranormal creatures don't have smut? I think they all do. We'll find it. It's probably in a tingler somewhere. Even she has not. She has not read the dinosaur smut, even though it's only forty-seven pages long. I'll get to it. <laughs> I'll do it for your birthday or something. I'll send you a video of me reading it. Oh man! Well, I'll narrate it. You know what? That's the kindest thing I think I've ever done for a friend. I narrated the entire um, her money in the Sorting Hat fiction over facetime oh my god did you send me that why did i read that i feel like i've read that recently oh, i'm sure that i have it's interesting 
It's interesting. Um, okay, so I can see we've been on here for two hours. If anyone has any final questions or comments, please leave them. I am going to post the um, choices for next month's live show on Twitter tonight. So you can go and vote today or tomorrow or for the next week if you would like. Um, might be a co-host, might not be, we'll see. If anyone wants to volunteer to read Smut and talk about it on my live show. So, yeah. I see no comments rolling in, so I guess that's kind of my cue. Let's see, I'll wait a second. You know, reading Back River Quiver out loud is valid. So. Don't people do like narration vlogs where they like narrate a chapter? Should I do that with Back River Quiver and like cold read it? Like don't read it beforehand? <laughs> Sure. I would love to see your reactions. No. Oh my God, please read some out with me, Kat. Can can you all imagine me putting her through that? Kat, please. Okay. I can't do it, so I would love to watch it. I think y'all are going to pick the new adult. I hope you guys pick the new adult and then I can make her suffer through that. So, Can you buy smuts in paperback? Yes. You can. They're expensive, so I don't do it, but you can. Because they're self-published usually. What's your Twitter? It's the same as my um, everything. It's at Chandler Ainsley. The Twitter account for this monthly book club is at Smonthly. It'll be in the description of this as well once I am done being live. Chan, I just realized, like, can you imagine how many subs you'll get when people realize that you are doing a smutty book club with Timothy Chalamet? You know, I can't promise a peach scene, but... Lucrative. I need you to read it so we can watch it. Oh, they, they don't do grab it anymore. Oh, wait, really? It could be, yeah, it's gone. Rest in peace. I, I figured there were some legality issues there, but yeah. Anyway, I'll get the I'll get the co-host and stuff worked out. Perhaps I'll coerce Garen into doing this again. We'll see. But there's definitely going to be more exciting stuff. Collaborations coming from us, so yeah, it'll be good. I'll be free for monthly in December, so. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for coming. Uh, this was like a lot more fun than I had anticipated. I was very nervous that no one would show up, but, um, thank you for reading. I'm sorry if you guys had to read this book this month. Like I really thought this was going to be like the perfect first pick, but it really didn't turn out as great as we had hoped. Um, but hopefully next month's pick would be good. We'll see. You guys better vote on the good ones. So, okay. But yeah, that's it. <laughs> Thanks for coming guys. Bye. Bye.